So to start off, this episode is a bit tricky. We had a lot of recording issues within the month we had recorded these episodes and decided that I will try to narrate the episode to make sense of the segments and to kind of keep everything up and walk you through it. I will play these audio segments when things are mentioned and when things kind of happen, and I will keep you as updated with things as best as possible. As a recap, the last session, the group had stayed in Spireheld after their meeting with Balix, which is Lucas's uncle. They were tasked with getting the Mind of Envy, an artifact that Balix needed. As they looked around and gained information, they learned that an elven woman made of a grey, corrosive slime had owned it. This elf also had known Santiago and may be their long-dead aunt. From here, they went on about learning about this elven woman until the elven guard, Calfin, reappeared as a revenant still ready to kill Santiago. As this revenant tore through the town, Santiago tried to lead it to the edge of the Centerlands, where Bader, Yui, and Kit had followed. Lucas, however, got onto his broom and decided to get his father's attention from the airship that was coming into Spireheld. He recognized it and thought maybe that was the best course of action. He had turned his eyes to Iasius, the storm giant who reappeared in the town and punched the revenant off the side of the islands along with the rest of the party. Thankfully, they landed upon a ship down below where they had learned that there are other people down here and they had seen the ocean for the first time in their lives. Lucas, however, separated from the party to get help and went back up towards Ethereum to make his way back to Spireheld to try to catch his father before it was too late. This officially is separating the party for quite some time, in-game at least. Now the party kind of makes their way to a place named Clearbook upon the ship, taking a little time to learn about the world and make sense of what's happening. Anyway, Cole. A five-card spread in a new place. What is it that we are seeing in front of us? Yui is taking out her fortune, her tarot deck, her majors, shuffling it, spreading out, taking out five cards in a horseshoe pattern, and flipping them over one at a time. What is this? What, what is our current section? The first card is the Emperor, a self-made man in a position of power. Our present position. In a new world, we are in a means of great change where we must take action. The expectation of strength. The resolve that we need to move forward. The moon is upright. A place of uncertainty. Not unexpected in truth, but perhaps a warning that we should be careful. Or, the next card is the sun, or that perhaps we will find reprieve. The moon and sun in tandem imply rest and rejuvenation. Where there is doubt, there is a light that always comes on the horizon. Answers. Allies, perhaps. And the long-term future reads the world. And it is reaching where we begin the end, where our current journey ends. And a new one begins anew. So while Yui is doing this, the ship is quite small. Um, where is everyone currently? And Yui, where are you doing? He is in one of the, um, rooms, I guess, would be a good way, I guess would be a good way to put it, while she's putting this together on the floor. I'm, yeah, I'm probably up on deck, because I'm not gonna smoke in, like, a place where a kid sleeps, but I don't like being out here that much, because it's just fucking scary. So while well, you're all doing this, Sam, the, like six-year-old or seven-year-old is currently at the helm of the ship. Uh, he's kind of directing it. So, so this ship is a little weird. It's basically a, it's kind of almost like akin to like a house on the back of a big dish-like thing. Um, none of you are really sure how it propels itself or what is its propulsion or how it flies, but it does. Um, it's not really, it's very different from any airship you've ever seen in your own character's life, and also it's pretty different in meta. Um, but it doesn't have a huge number of rooms, because typically it's just a captain and a sunset. So it's got like a main kind of cabin room for those two. And, um, the captain is currently beneath the deck, working on like the engine room, in quotation marks. Um, so Cole, you, you've read out your fortune, you've had some pretty interesting results, which I have to say are very, very good, 
in in in, in the grand scope of things. So I think I think I think they'll pan out in an interesting way. Um, is there anything else you'd like to do? Are you gonna stay in your little cabin room? Nah, I'm gonna pick up the 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 cards, put them away, and I'm gonna step outside the cabin into the hall. <laughs> um, as you do, Aaron. What's your mm. passive perception? You know it's not that high. It's 11. Okay, that, that's <laughs> enough. As long as it's not. Cat. It's literally... Okay, okay. Also, perception is wisdom. But that's enough, Aaron. It's not an, it's not an easy... It's not, a, it's not an easy thing to miss. Um, Just when I put my passive perception in the, the same place. And Dareth has higher than anyone. <laughs> 17, bitch! <laughs> um, Aaron... You spot coming through the clouds. Um, Santiago, are you also on deck? Yeah. Okay, so Aaron and Santiago, uh, sorry, Kit Can and Santiago are on deck. Uh, Santiago, what's your passive perception? 16. Okay, that's that's more than enough. Um, Kit Kat, you spot something. Something in the clouds, like shifting them apart, pushing them apart, moving. Something large. Uh, Santiago, you kind of notices as well, just a little faint movement, and you realize there's a lot of it. And at first you're like, oh, it's just like a flock of birds or a flock of bats or something. But very quickly you realize each one of these birds, or each one of these large, leathery, bird, bat-like creatures, there is a lot. It is a very, very large flock, and each of them is like half the size of your ship. And they are currently flying towards you. Um, but they have these very strange beak-like protrusions, basically, from their faces, but you would almost call them, they don't really have a huge amount of feathers or fur. They're almost more akin to bat. Okay. Like a weird mixture, and also giant. Um, and they're currently giving us really death <laughs> as they're flying towards you. They're dinosaurs. <laughs> Are these, uh, typical creatures oh. around here, Captain? Look uh, he's not here. Old. <laughs> he's like, hi! <laughs> Do you know what those are? Have I introduced you to Charlie? <laughs> it, is that Charlie? No, he pulls out a rock. This is Charlie. You know Charlie? Hi, Charlie. Now, what, the f what are those? Charlie doesn't like you. Okay, I don't like you either, Charlie. It's way harder <laughs> sometimes. Look at Charlie. You should go tell Dad that they're here. Okay. <laughs> um, the, the child does not look very panicked by the situation. But they are quickly approaching. Um, by now, they're getting closer and closer. Are you going down the deck, or are you going to try and alert them in some way? Or are you just going to watch what happens? Um, I'm going to tell Kit Kat to holler if shit gets too weird um <laughs> then kind of head down and shout at everybody there's some birds <laughs> I don't, uh, I don't, I don't thanks know. for sharing <laughs> santiago you, santiago shouts this about the small sh uh, ship and while well, the walls are wooden and not great for spreading you know vibrations and sound um it does still definitely get around because the walls are all square fit and as they say this, a, a couple a couple moments later, you all start to realize you can hear very faint, loud, and shrill squawking coming from somewhere off the ship. So you, I imagine you're like in the hallway. Santiago's coming. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go in the direction that he's shouting. Okay. Uh, Bader, what are you doing when you can hear this? I think I'm working on the lightning's javelin. <laughs> You're just like working on it and shit. Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> are you gonna Are you gonna care about this this shout of birds? Birds. I need it back. Birds. I guess I will. Or you know, I mean, birds are always in the sky. Santiago's probably just. Uh, I guess I should. I guess I should go. You're gonna head out as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, the captain hears this as well, and he pokes his head out of the injury. He goes, Birds! You mean bunts? I suppose. The uh, uh, big, big leathery things? 
Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Like tell, tell everyone. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's normal. Just uh, tell everyone to be real, real quiet. Not, not a single word, not a single whisper. Uh, give me one second. He goes back into the engine room. And you can kind of feel the ship beneath your feet. So, so as you guys have been traveling, there's been a pretty consistent, constant motion. Even when you're not moving forward or down or whatever, the ship has always been in some kind of movement. Maybe it's been spinning, maybe it's been rocking, there's always been some kind of movement. But now you're in here, and suddenly you can feel it as the ship begins to slow and slow and just completely crawl to an almost perfect stop. And the, 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 are you going to tell everyone to be quiet, or what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna shout it? No. <laughs> if, if everyone's coming towards me, I'm just gonna, you know, gesture the, the universal gesture of be quiet. So, Aaron, you're currently... Sorry, we'll, we'll jump back to you. So, Aaron, you're currently on deck. You have not heard this call to be quiet. It sounds like it's not giving you a gesture. And you can feel the ship coming to a stop. It's a little frightening, because now, as you're watching, keeping an eye out, as you've been told to shout by Santiago if anything weird happened, um, you keep an eye out, and you're looking off, and behind this enormous flock of bird bat like creatures, there is, in meta, the only way I can describe it is a UFO. <laughs> it what? is a large, circular, spinning dish-like creature. It's definitely organic. Um, and it's covered in, like, a similar leathery skin as the birds themselves. Um, and it seems to be hovering, well, not hovering, but moving and flying quite quickly alongside these things as well, almost following the herd. <laughs> and there is this pretty consistent low humming you can hear from it as well. You're and that's pretty fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. Fucking amazing. I, I... I don't know! What do you do? Do you do anything? Um, I'm probably gonna talk to Buttercup and be like... Uh... <laughs> that doesn't look very tasty. No, yeah. but I have the same kind of wings as them, so would they... <laughs> do you think that they could mistake me for two seconds as one of their own so I can, like, <laughs> like, scoot it off the deck and be like... This is some weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I may look like a highlighter, but I still have big leathery wings. This so is true. think about it. Maybe you're related. So up, <laughs> they could see and they'd be like, up, up for about two seconds. Just and that would give me enough time to put out. Are you just like freezing up and like going, butter? What do I do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buttercup, I don't fucking know. Chip <laughs> uh, back to Santiago and the others. Um, what were you thinking, Cole? Santiago? Uh, what's going on? Oh, he just told us to be quiet. There's some thing outside. He doesn't seem that concerned about it. Um, just be quiet. Oh, uh, sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, slowly the door to, like, the engine room opens up, and then the, the captain comes, like, basically tiptoeing out, and he's like... He's, like, he's, like, waiting for you to come. I'm gonna follow. Okay. okay. Gonna follow. Um, so all of you head outside onto the deck, him very slowly opening the door, and he sees you, Kit Kat. Um, what do you do when you see the, in the, the captain opening up the door and everyone are I'm gonna, like, I'm, like, making eye contact, I'm, like, Wait, what am I saying? Shrugs. Um, and in like, do you all stay silent or do any of you do that? Oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, you all, like, these huge flock of birds seem to notice you. But instead of coming at you, they were coming at you before, but they seem to notice you now. And they kind of, like, angrily squawk at each other and like, bump into each other and, like, scratch at each other with, like, the ends of their wings have these, like, strange claws. Um, but instead of coming at you, they just, like, kind of, like, pull up or pull down, and they all, like, separate around the ship, going over and under it, like, completely ignoring you. Um, and the strange UFO-like creature ignores you as well. It stops for a moment. It, it, it kind of slows down and hovers over the ship for a moment. And there is this deafening vibration being sent through your bones. 
so you can feel it inside of your skin and you can feel it rattling and shaking your teeth and you can hear it rattling and shaking the boards of the ship as well. Um, and then suddenly it seems to lose interest and it continues flying alongside the birds. Um, and very quickly they kind of disappear into another cloud past you. Okay. I think we're good. Anyway. What was that? What? Okay, you people really aren't from around here, are you? No. That's what we've been trying yeah. to tell you. <laughs> I, I've been thinking about it in the last couple of days. and I'm going to put it this way. Either you people are simple, which is a possibility. Huey takes offense to that. <laughs> or you oh. really aren't from around here. We aren't. Okay. Those are what every we, single uh, one of us being mentally diminished. I mean, it's not impossible. Sorry, anyway, to as I was saying, <laughs> you, you really don't know. Um, those are what we common folk call bunnies. The uh, big, big birds. They're named after the clothing you make out of them, actually. And uh, that uh, big, that big spinning creature, the one with the plate. Um, that's what we call it. A, 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 a little volative volative form vol volat I don't I don't know okay it's just my, I know I don't know how to deal with it just don't worry about it just don't make any noises be real quiet won't bother you not doesn't even know you're there real stupid it's actually what we made this ship out of and as he says that you kind of like realize yeah that's it's about the same size and shape as the base of the ship you guys are currently on um anyway but the ship's like, it's like, and they're called volatile forms or volatile form. What, however you say, you know how it is. But uh, yeah, just be quiet, real quiet around them. They won't bother you, not. Hmm. Uh, Sam, get down here. And Sam's like, yeah, okay. It's Ed. Okay. You know Charlie? And his father's like, yep, yep, Charlie. Okay. Uh, go to go. <laughs> just, uh, talk with the talk with the people and explain anything you need to. And he kind of like goes and like goes back up to the uh, wheel. That's not a wheel. The, the 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 hell the disc what are y'all doing sam's kind of just standing there looking at you all i am <laughs> what are you all just staring at this child <laughs> as he's staring back yeah y'all are making me uncomfortable you know the you know the are you winning son meme and then the son's a little pepe with big ol eyes yes <laughs> that's what totally i imagine is. sam like, do you want to do you want to play the kid, Sam? Do you want to play the kid? Okay, I can play a four-year-old. Yeah, play you play the kid. Sam, you play the kid. No, he's two. He's okay. one. You're making me uncomfortable. Uh, Continue. Sorry, there. Sam. Uh, I'm gonna win, you know. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> the, captain's gonna the captain's gonna call from the hell, and he's gonna be like. People where you come from not know how to, like, conversate, nothing like that? Just stare. We've had a like, long fucking day. Uh, so, Sam, just gonna kneel down uh, so I'm closer to the kid's height. Uh, how long have you and your dad been doing this, traveling like this? Um, Sam, since as, as far back as you can remember. Which, I don't know. I've just always been on the ship. Really? Just you and your dad? I don't know. Some other people come around every now and then. Hmm. Really? They're kind of weird, though. Charlie doesn't like them too much. Yeah, what uh, the kid's saying is uh, we, we have sometimes... We have visitors, people who need to, you know, get around. We're not, we're, we, we, we trade things, we act as a merchant, we uh, help, help uh, move things, including people sometimes. You know, just honest business, honest work. I see. I, I imagine his background and he's just like, yeah, but you help them all the time. Honestly moving people or honest moving people? You know... What counts as honest? 
I suppose anything is honest mm. for the right amount of coin. Well, that's not just it. You know, we got... Well, you, you got well, well, when you got certain laws and rules in the land that you just disagree with. You know. I see. Yeah, well, in any case. What happened to your friend? Now how you get this kid? Hmm? Excuse you? Honestly, moving people around. He's like poking at Yui. He's like, what happened to your friend? Incessantly asking and poking. Huh? Oh, Lucas? Are you asking? Yeah, what about happened Lucas? to your friend? He got on a weird broom. I don't know what it is. Oh. Yes, it's a it's it's a it's a magic broom. He flew away to get us help. How much does oh, this kid know about like magic, Justin? It's taking him a while to like come back. Nothing. What's that? What's magic? What's that? Can you do it? Can any of your friends uh, do it? What about you? And he's like poking at Santiago. What about you? No. Uh, but, but before any of you answer that question, I don't need to know. My kid doesn't need to know if any of you can do anything like that. Okay. We don't want to get no trouble here. I mean, I agree with certain laws, but laws are law. So if any of you can do anything like that, you don't need to say it. Magic legal around here? Yeah, legal in the right hands. And uh, who has the right hands then? Who do you think? The ones who make the law. Oh, I'm not gonna get into all that, okay? That that whole situation is the reason our kiddo here only got a father. But I'm not gonna get into any of that. And you shouldn't either. Uh, you people ain't from around here, that's what I can tell. Especially now. When you come down and I drop you off on that, on that little content of ours, you don't be showing off anything you can do. If you can do anything, and I don't want to know if you can, don't be showing none of that off. Okay? That's a word of warning. Now I got a friend down there. I'm going to be dropping you off with him. I'm pulling on Kit Cow's wings now. I'm kind of like, just have my hands on them. What? These are cool. Oh, yes. Thank I you. Uh, Tifoy. Um, he kind of like reaches behind him and he pulls out like a cloak. Like a big, big, oh. big, big, heavy cloak. And he tosses it at you. He pulls it out of his ass. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it's warm. <laughs> Right. He's, like, asking for, like, elaboration, like, what about it? Uh, place you come from must have been real different. Uh, around here, some people, and I say some, have, uh, some negative ideas on t -Foys. I think you're cool, but they don't like you. And it's kind of related to the whole magic thing. Listen, I'm sure if you go down there and you stay around any town, any city long enough, you'll hear some goddamn preacher going on about magic and the devil, you know, all, all that stuff. And you'll understand soon. If you, if you really want to ask, you can. But uh, for your own good, you know. I'm part snake, though. It's not a, like... Like, no. I don't have goat legs. Yeah, I, I know, but the horns and the wings, trust me. Okay. <laughs> he's gonna, like, okay. <laughs> he's trying to process this, because, like, of course he's dealt with this, you know, before, elsewhere. Because Kit Cause never dealt with uh, with excess racism. <laughs> he's he's hot pink, like, Huge, hot pink you know, whatever, but he's like... You stand out. Specifically. <laughs> yeah, you stand out, but the, those traits especially, the captain is saying mm -hmm. it's gonna get you in trouble, so uh, be careful. I'm gonna go play mm -hmm. around with something something on the ship. <laughs> I'm just narrating a child. You <laughs> just go and fucking... I wanna I've go back to the engine. Well, I'm obviously touching dangerous equipment, though. Sam's like playing with Santiago's flame sword. They somehow got a hand on it. Oh no! This is heavy. Oh, just a javelin. Pick, picks up a <laughs> cigarette butt off the deck and eats it. <laughs> <laughs> no magic and 
Oh, this place. Like, like I was saying, though, I, I'm dropping you off with a friend of mine. He, he, he's also seen some uh, trouble with the populace, so he should be pretty invited, hopefully. Uh, just don't cause him no trouble, okay, while you're here. Alright. Does this kid know, know who he's talking about? Um, I don't think Sam, I don't think Sam would be able to put it together. Okay. I'm just asking constant questions to be how do I, how do I, what does this child know? What, what, what is Sammy going to say? Because I'm just doing dumb shit. Another uh, uh, you... business person? Hmm? He's an honest businessman. It's another honest Not my friend? Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Business is the last thing on his mind. He can't. If you, you try and go through a business a transaction with this guy, he'll, he'll give you anything for nothing. Terrible with business, but it's a good man from what I've seen. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah, you'll be away from town a little bit, too, so you won't have to worry about anything you can do. I'm not saying you can, but you can be a little freer with that. Just don't be too free. Uh, in any case, uh... I've now walked up to the cat. I've now walked up to, obviously, my, like, is this my dad, technically? Yeah, it is. Who are you talking about? You never tell me! Well, well, maybe, maybe we'll we'll see him when we go down there. I'll show you Sam. But uh, I get to see your friend. Yeah, I guess you knew before. Yeah, I don't know if you remember him. It was a few years. It was a couple. It was like a year ago. And anyway, anyway. Uh, any other questions you folks got? There's going to be a couple days before we get down there. Yeah, yeah when's dinner? In like a couple hours. Don't worry. Okay. I'm gonna go back to touching dangerous equipment now. <laughs> Don't don't touch hands away. Stop. I suppose if we're gonna be here for a while. It'd be nice to eat and get some rest. What kind of food you got down here then? Hmm? Oh, down in the sea? I mean down here as in from up there. Oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. Oh, uh, we got all sorts. Um all sorts. Uh, there's this one creature. I won't bother with his name, but uh, it's, uh, it's meat is naturally salty. It's a little tough sometimes, but you get the right kind, get the right chef. That shit's delicious. It ain't too expensive. You big, big old creatures. Uh, got some good fruit. Um, just so you know, there is a couple of fruits that you'll be in that uh, don't taste so good, but are pretty high in nutrients. From what I hear, festivals starting up too. So if you go. Go to one of the festival locations. You can get some real good, real rare sweets for not too much. Will that be a safe location for folks like us to be traveling? Well, maybe... As long as you don't cause no trouble. As long as you don't cause no trouble. Alright. It's going to be difficult no... when it comes to buying food if we don't have the money for it. Yeah, well, the friend I got is a good, good forager, can help you gather some stuff. And there are lots of odd jobs, lots of things you can do around town that can maybe help you get some money. Maybe you can sell some stuff at your own. Who knows? I'd offer you some of my own, but, you know, I'm running a little tight myself. Hmm. Is he supposed to be touching the gestures to Sam? Oh, he's probably fine. What is he touching? <laughs> it's like mystery bag. And it's like jangling around and stuff. It's got like ropes completely tied it up. And he's just like pulling on it and like messing with all the insides. Captain's like, oh, okay, it's fine. Well, if you got any more questions, I'll be right here. Uh, I, th I think I got one more. <laughs> I fucking go to chain like my next cigarette. You got any more of these in this world? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he kind of like pulls out like a little oh, case. Thank God. He pulls out like a really, like, a, like what looks like a pretty nice one. And he like flips it to you. Oh. Yes. <sighs> anytime. Anytime, brother. Fantasy weed. Let me try. Yeah. Welcome to Santiago. No. Uh, no, let, no. Not let him try. No. 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 Why not? No. You're, you're, you're please, a little young. Please. I got big old lungs and this is bad for me. I can't imagine how it would be for some little tiny. See, what are you, like, two? I'm six. Okay. Months? And a half. 
six months, six and a half months. <laughs> Where's your f I had my staring contest. I'm winning still. Hey, by the way, <laughs> um, pony ear lady. Hmm? Um, I don't look like a drow. Uh, but you don't really look like a royal family either. I, I want to ask what your whole deal is. You might want to cover those up, though. Attract some attention. Um, I heard you. Uh, hair down. <laughs> heard you working with them cards. Yeah, walls are thick. Yes. What about them? Yeah, I don't subscribe to all that hogwash. But you know, you do. You. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, track some bad you, you do you, that's all I'm saying. But anyway, all we have here is you need me. Anything else, just call. The trip will be a couple of days to get down to the sea level. Uh, is there anything else you want to ask or talk about during those couple of days? Or is there, do you want to talk to each other or do anything? Or do you want to kind of have more of like a calmer, quieter trip? Just think until you get to the bottom. What's, what are you guys doing during this two days? I want to play solitaire with Sam. <laughs> <laughs> What's your world like? Where are you from? Uh. What's your name? Uh. Well, most call me Yui. It's a weird name. Yui. I've been um, told that. As you're talking in the middle of your sentence, it, your throat's feeling a little scratchy. You feel like, kind of like hurting a little bit. Turn a little more. It's starting to really, there's something, you're like having to like, it's like forcing itself up your throat. Uh, please excuse me. <laughs> I'm gonna hey, step up far this, away from this kid as I can. You, you wretch up this like saliva covered letter. <laughs> it's in an envelope, oh, by yeah, the way. An envelope. <laughs> oh, what the hell is that? Is anyone else watching this? <laughs> <laughs> that is... Pika is. He's like, Pika, you had a similar experience. <laughs> oh, is it from my cousin? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a drama. I, I, I doubt your cousin knows who I am. Or at least, oh, God. That's... Oh, there's something else in there. There's something else coming up. It's cold. You're in the hospital, Justin. <laughs> no, it's a visual oh, sit separately. <laughs> it, got, it got separated in the process. There's something else in there, Cole. It's coming up. It's cold, no! and it's like it's like scratching, and you're like <laughs> into your hand. Oh, I'm I'm so uh, wait, hold on. Give Yui a couple yeah. smacks on the back to like help. <laughs> you do that, and you you just spit up like three gold pieces. Ah, uh, <laughs> you like a bird. There's a letter though. <sighs> what does the letter say? Um, I will read it to you as soon as Yui says what it is. <laughs> She's gonna crack it open. The ink's all smudged. It's like soaked. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> That's why I put it in an envelope. <laughs> it's from uh, Lucas. Uh, to read it out loud, it goes, Yui, I'm sorry for making you cough up a letter, who was the only way I could think of before I make my way to Azerfelt once again. Made my way up above the clouds, been kind of dizzy and cold and wet from the clouds themselves, and I've been very uh, distressed, to say the least, of my travel with my companion. A literal copy of myself is what I thought at first, but now I've accepted him as my literal twin. I found in my home's backyard, uh, being me and playing with North as I used to in the forest, as normal wishes sake. Uh, I'm helping him find his own identity. It seems when I showed up, even he felt like his own you know, name abandoned him. I'm honestly rather proud and feeling far less lonely to have such a wonderful friend who seems to understand me. Um, I'll be bringing him with me, uh, considering our meeting with Balix has been uh, fruitful. As he says, the reason we exist is space is kind of messed up and he some of his influence. Uh, maybe it's going to put me up like a carbon copy based upon a decision. Uh, the one you all know and are reading from is the one who decided to leave and the other one didn't follow through with it. Uh, I'd like him to meet you all, so please don't call him Poppy or anything. Uh, Lucas will do. Actually, that may be confusing. We'll come up with something. Uh, we're rather good friends with the same guy who's the same subjects. I'm honestly rather jealous as he's read books in his father's library that I didn't know anything about. Uh, speaking of which, 
uh, it turns out he may have seen me and went with his airship to go get me. So you'll know Alistair Len when you see him, as I kind of look like him, but a little younger. Uh, as another note, uh, I'm traveling to Azrafelt with Lucas to retrieve that airship that Balix has handed me handed over, so I'll be able to retrieve you all and return you all to where you're from. Perhaps even travel won't be so bad if we all want to stay down there for a while to learn about it. I'd know we'd be both interested in the ocean itself. Uh, yes, actually, that's what it's called. The ocean, the sea. It's marvelous, isn't it? Uh, anyways... Uh, I do so much thinking now, and honestly, I'm rather scared that I haven't made friends and just have people following me around because of my family so they'd, they'd help me get them what they want. Uh, I know you all aren't very fond of me, as, it see, as I see the looks of crazy things I say or the things that happen. Uh, everyone seems to immediately accuse me of things that I didn't do or suddenly got wrapped up in, especially Santiago. It's really obvious now. Believe me, I'm not stupid. I see it. Uh, I apologize for all the times I cause issues. It's not my intention by any means. So please apologize to the group for me. I honestly can say that if you all don't like me after this mess, then maybe my name is most, is really just a curse. And bad luck in the world. It's my fault we're in this mess. Just because I wanted to help Santiago get away from somebody... Uh, something that wanted to hurt him. I'm honestly rather ashamed of my family name, and it's that... And, it, and that it... Got, I got us in this mess. I understand if you in the group are mad at me, and if you want me to leave the group once we ever return you all, if you want to return. I'm truly sorry about all of this mess. I hope you have all found some sort of kind, some sort of help from some kind of somebody. Kind and at least caring. At least they can do more than me and my last name. I hope I can reunite everyone. And there's a little note at the bottom, and it's a, and it's a little bit more. Uh, I'm aware you can't respond. But I felt that at least updating you all on how it's been going on my end, considering I left all the rations and most of those magical items. Uh, if, um, if somebody obtained the Mind of Envy, that would ease my mind, but I would have no way of knowing. Please try to be careful. We have no idea what the world is like, what currency they use, their standards on magic, or anything of sorts. I'd suggest keeping low profile as hard as that will be with Kitka's lovely appearance, and trying to keep anyone's ability on need to no basis. I'll try to find some way that'll allow response so I can try and find you all, but I can say that the possibility has at least another two weeks before I can remotely begin the search for you all in the airship. I apologize in advance. Any again, I hope to reconvene soon, so please keep tabs on where you are, and if you can find a way, please respond. I don't want to come down there and find out that your pretty red hair has been locked in some cell. Not that I think it would happen, but I'd rather not find out. Anyway, here's the three gold I had left over. I had kept it as a souvenir. I hope it helps something. Thank God Lucas doesn't have to use his sending spell because he goes on. <laughs> Lucas. Also, Lucas, has, yeah, Lucas has continued the tried and true tradition of being terrible at explaining the situation. <laughs> There's two Lucases, the and, and I was at Spiderheld, and, and we were talking, and he got to read books. And like, what? What? <sighs> the gist of the letter is that Lucas is saying he's now traveling with himself, another Lucas, <laughs> and he's going to Azerfelt to gain a ship. It appears that our good buddy Lucas has a twin that even he didn't know about until oh, recently. Oh god, there's two of them? <laughs> I'm gonna kill him before making me throw that up. Which one? Oh, we could always send one back. <laughs> How do you send one back? You send it through the mailbox. Well, we don't know how what this place oh. is. Well, I think for the time being, we should keep the magic in general on the down low. Okay. I don't think the postage runs to up there from down here. Then how did the letter get here? Uh, anyway, <laughs> I'm going to get some water or some tea. I need to wash out whatever this feeling is in my throat. At least you didn't throw up. Sam, where's the kitchen again? He's gonna he's gonna pull you along. Yeah, what yeah. Yeah, can't we get down there? Don't no rats. Alright. No, 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 no rats. No rats. By the no way, rats? By the way, Kit Kat, one rat. The rat that you threw up a while before. It's been a few days now. It's been like quite a, quite a while. Um, you've you've been kind of getting a lot more friendly with it. It's slowly overcoming its trauma, and it's like it's way friendlier than uh, Buttercup. Even though Buttercup is very angry at it. It's my baby. I, can I name him? Oh yeah, totally. What should I name my rat? Lucas. Lucas. <laughs> I'm not a rat. Oh 
my god, he's never coming back now. <laughs> <laughs> name it Lucas. No, wait, I'm gonna name I'm gonna name it Adrama Lich after my cousin. Oh, that's great. Aww. Okay, Adrama Lich is the rat. <laughs> Kit Kat, Buttercup, and Adrama Lich. Anything else you guys want to talk about or do on your trip down? Or what? Work you? on the lightning javelin. Yes, you are. So, Sean, basically, what you're doing is you're attaching a net to a javelin. Which yeah. means that when you throw it, the javelin returns, but the net will attach to someone and latch onto them. Mm-hmm. Um, it is sharp, so it'll cut them. It has electrified. So it'll shock them, and it's not too hard to get off, but it's not it's, it's not nearly as easy as a normal net is. So it will work pretty well, and it, you, as long as you got like more metal nets or any other kind of nets, you can probably attach it and use it. Um, by the end of this, you'll probably have fixed it up. I would say, yeah. or give it a, 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 another day, maybe. But if not by this session, the next session you'll have fixed it up for uh, a, uh, for Kit Kat. Okay. Okay. So you've been working on that. Um, Kit Kat, what do you do for the two uh, days as you're traveling? Um, I guess I may do a little bit of flying, but only like right around the ship to like check it out because this is like really weird. Like I've never been on a ship like this, of course. Yeah, it, it's a fucking weird ass ship. Isn't it just a house with a disc attached to it or something? Kind of. It's a little more aerodynamic than that, but kind of. I'll have to really yeah, draw it out. So. Uh, by the way, when you're flying around it, Aaron, uh, Kit Kat, you don't notice this when you're on top of it, but when you're flying around it and a little below it, your body is racked with these, like, vibrations. Like, you can feel your bones shaking. And it gets a little hard to fly because it feels like this thing is just exuding this sound you cannot hear all around it. Which, like, it gives you, like, a headache if you're around it too long. Okay. The top is safe, but from all other sides, it's like, and especially below it, it's it's like mm-hmm. reverberating through your entire body. Mm. Uh, anything else you're doing for you? Um, I guess maybe I need to feed, of course, uh, Buttercup in a drama lunch because mm-hmm. you, know, you could feed a drama lunch to birds. Buttercup. You could two birds, one stone. Yeah, right, Sean. No. Yeah. That's my cousin I'm talking about now. You can't. You can't just do him like the that. Rat. Uh, oh. Yui, aside from throwing up, uh, what else did you do over the couple of days you guys were traveling? Be mad. <laughs> <laughs> Plan I to kill Lucas. Uh, let's see. Now, you, Yui has thrown up a five paragraph essay. Yeah. I and imagine money. that I've probably helped the guy with cooking dinner now and again, mm-hmm. but other than that, I really don't have anything else that I would have think thought that Yui would be doing much of. The captain is... His, his cooking skills are... They're basic. <laughs> they're like the absolute base of what you could use. And he's mm-hmm. right, there are there are some fruits that he has like the most in storage that are these really sour, really pugnant fruits. Um, you've not seen them before, and they taste not great, but mm-hmm. they are very nutritious according to him. Is it a banana? To, like, warn off any kind of like serious disease or illness. Is it a banana? Mm-hmm. Uh, Bador, uh, alongside helping or uh, alongside crafting a dr- uh, Kit Kat's lightning javelin net spear. What else were you doing over the couple of days? You're just kind of taking it easy. Lucas did. You did yeah, tell just... Lucas you would make him a staff. <laughs> mm. I don't have wood. I don't have a stick. A big <laughs> stick. Just, just a friendly reminder. <laughs> <laughs> just for him. Re- remembers that he doesn't know how he's gonna get it to Luke. <laughs> well, I, I mean, according to Yui's letter. He said he's finding a way down with an airship that Balix has given him, but he has to apparently go find it. <laughs> so I guess I I need wood <laughs> to make a staff. I assume. That reminds me, you are a craftsman, and you probably would notice this. Um, the ship that you're in, Bador, alongside the very weird disc base. The wood itself almost feels alive. It's a weird thing to say about wood, but it does. It almost seems to, like, move and, like, 
there's almost like an energy to the wood. Mm-hmm. You can tell it's obviously not fucking normal wood in some way. Yeah. And Santiago, what have you been doing for the two two days aside from just smoking your fucking lungs to pieces? I feel like that's about it. Santiago <laughs> is more on edge. Like I don't think maybe everyone thought that was possible, but it is. They're just like just pacing about the upper deck and not really going inside too much, um, unless they need to like chill out or fucking eat um i think on the first night they fucking fall asleep standing up outside oh damn <laughs> yeah i think um on the second day by the way uh maybe someone else is here if, if if you think you're nearby enough to hear this just say because the ship is small it's not hard to hear everyone mm-hmm. um but the, sh- the captain is gonna approach you santiago and he's gonna go hey um you uh, asked something the uh, first day we met, you fell from the sky. You asked about some elf lady or some red-haired person. Uh, yeah. I, I did. Yeah, I told you that was pretty fit into the descriptor of the royal family. Uh, what did you want to know about? Like, why were you asking? <laughs> it's a lot of complicated feelings there. Yeah, I feel that. You know, they used to be a lot better than what they are now. There's been some whispers. This person I knew may or may not have been part of this royal family. Is the one that raised me. Oh, I hope it isn't. And she never Fair told me never told me about her past. But runaway princess was definitely the story I expected the least. Well, let me let me tell you this. I, I hope it's not the same person you're thinking of, because uh, it's pretty agreed upon, even if we're not allowed to say it. The royal family is just a bunch of tyrants, every one of them. Be why she left. Maybe. For your sake, I hope I hope you're wrong. It, it, the whole the whole point of the royal family is to govern the world government, which governs only everyone else. They only make decisions. Ubiquitously, they only oh, they only make a decision if every one of them agrees. Well, they haven't dissented an agreement in the last four hundred years, and trust me, their decisions are not good. You uh, yeah, I heard this much. Um, I hope you're wrong. Yeah, that would be my luck, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, good luck with whatever you're doing. But, um, I, I appreciate it. And, um, Keep... sorry for accusing you of human trafficking the other day. <laughs> you know, we got a lot of laws. We got a lot of people up top in the big old seats that decide oh, where. I didn't need to verify my concerns that, you, yeah, yes. No, 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 no. Listen, we got a lot of shit in this, in this world of ours. Sometimes some people might not, you know, I'm just going to stop talking. I'm going to wish you a good old day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have a good you time. Should, you should go. You need another cigar I'm right here. Uh, what, yeah, what, what I'm going right now. <laughs> and he goes, he, 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 The most up. awkward conversation ever. <laughs> that wasn't a no to human trafficking. <laughs> 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 Honestly, stop talking. Anyway. Is there anything anyone else wants to do or say before you end your little little mini journey in the sky? That was my symbolic way of letting Lucas go for this for the portions of the game he's not here. I just imagine that Yui has helped with some of the um, lunch and dinner cooking and spent a lot of time with Sam. Mm-hmm. Because someone has to entertain the kid. The father doesn't seem great at it. <laughs> I can say that Yui will have a sneaking suspicion this may or may not happen again. But I can fly the kid around if she wants to, you know. (laughs) Watch the kid come fly around. Can I I join? Can I ride? Do you you mind if I, like, get on your back and, like, like, Mm -hmm. look like like a bird? You want to be a bird? Is your dad okay with this? (laughs) Yeah! (laughs) Yeah, can I ride on the weird- can I ride on the weird man? You drop him, I drop you. (laughs) 
okay. So I'm just gonna like hold him, but you know, I, I'm not gonna let him go. Unless you want to. Unless you uh, want to. Anyway, lunch will be ready soon, so everyone please don't drop the kid. I'm begging you. Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> This is so fucking cool! Hey, don't use that kind of language. I don't know where you learned that from. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine. I don't know what you're fucking insinuating. <laughs> <laughs> well, the captain um, kind of pulls and the ship kind of rocks back and forth as it kind of slows down. And you can see this pretty large clearing beneath it. It seems to be having, it's covered in gravel and small rocks. It looks like it's kind of made for ships to, you know, kind of stop here. And it kind of lowers itself down almost like a hovering. And slowly it reaches the ground. And you, can, you guys can see and feel, now that you're close to the ground, rocks being blasted off to each side. And you can, like, see the ground shaking beneath it as the ship is sending these vibrations through the earth. And that are now being reflected up into you guys just a little bit. Um, but slowly it comes to a stop, and it rests on the ground, and you can feel the ship starting to, like, stop shuddering and shaking fire. And you are all finally on mostly solid ground. Santiago jumps off and starts kissing the ground. <laughs> well, uh, we're here. Uh, we're a little bit out of town. Barkskin's that way. Um, you're looking for, uh, uh, you're looking for a nice drow man. He's got white hair, real tall. Uh, name's Dareth. Dave, Dareth. Uh, he already knows you're coming. That's an Apolio, uh, Apolio boy. Uh, so if you need anything, just, you know, I mean, you can get in contact with me somehow, probably. Or I'll get in contact with you. It, maybe we'll see each other again, maybe not. But, uh, whatever happens, good luck with what you're doing, really. Well, thank you for everything. And if I hear anything about your friend Lucas, if he comes back down here, maybe he will, maybe he won't. I'll, uh, give him a shout, tell him you guys are around here. Even if I, even if I just hear about him, I'll search him out. I will. I'll tell him you guys are around Barkskin Town, um, the island. Even though he doesn't like that Len family. <laughs> Supposedly there might be... Too. Someone else coming down, but you don't look too unsimilar to Lucas, so. Well, I'll keep an ear out for anyone looking for people like you. Really, I, I hope you all, I really hope you all find what you need to, get done what you need to. It's a tough world out here, be careful, okay? Goodbye, Sam. Your, your, your teeth, why do they say tieflings are scary? I think they're cool. Hey, Sam. Shh. Not the time. Oh. Yeah. Keep him on the down low. But, uh, well, good luck with everything. Uh, he kind of, like, comes back on uh, the ship, and wait. you can hear him kind of, like, heading inside to, like, start back up. Now he's touching dangerous equipment again. <laughs> Is he on the bottom of the ship? Uh, just so you know. I know he's not. Mm -hmm. There's no way he's falling let him do that. Uh, just so you know, before I go, real quick, uh, if you need me, I'll probably be near one of the towns, or one of the capitals. Rather, I'm gonna be up in, uh, uh, sorry, I'm gonna be up in Seaflight for a little while, capital of this year island, then I'm moving down to, uh, uh, Brand. Okay? Alright. So if you need me, just look out for those places. Seaflight Yeah. Well, Seaflight is the first city, Brand's the second one. Ask around, find a map, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, so if you need me, I'll be there. Uh, good luck with everything. And he heads back into his ship, and after a few moments, he starts starting up again, the whole thing's shaking. You, you all probably back up a good several feet as the vibrations, you can feel them, and this whole thing begins shuddering and lifting off the ground. And it's like sending these waves of like sound and, like sound and energy and vibrations downwards, and pushing itself upwards. And you can see it beginning to take off and then like tilt slightly and then push itself off into the distance. So you guys are in a little gravel clearing now. There is a path and it's leading in the direction he spoke about to Barkskin. Um, 
around you are these pretty thickly wooded woods. Uh, the trees are very tall, and they look very powerful and alive. They look very, like, very, very alive and very firm, I guess you could say. Um, however, even being here immediately, you can tell that a lot of them have been chopped down. Like, a good amount of them in this clearing have been chopped down. The clearing is not natural. Um, are you going to head in the direction you said, or what are you all doing? What's going on? I'm gonna head to the city. Yeah, city. You're gonna talk on the way. On still solid land. <laughs> Joy the ground. Santiago's knees are clacking together like a goat's. Do you all so, wanna talk and roleplay real quick while you're traveling to Barkskin? They're in canon, making fun of Lucas's of how long he writes. <laughs> you Understandable. Just holding up a letter and everyone's pointing and laughing at it. <laughs> That day. Holding up both letters. Does anyone know what a drow looks like? Do we, Justin? Do we? Yeah, drows exist. They're pretty rare. Aaron, Kit Kat, you're probably one of the few that have seen it. You you might have as well. Yeah. Um, Great. They, yeah, I couldn't them. quite hear, but what? Did he like call did that captain call me one or something like that? Uh, he said, he said like, you're not a, he said you don't look like a drow, but you might want to cover up your pointy ears because yeah. it's kind ah. of reminiscent of the royal family. Um, oh, okay. But you, 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 you guys do know Aaron and you. I would say that you have seen drows before. Aaron probably more so because they're more up near the uh, Misperdin. Yui sometimes they'll visit Spyarm Hell, so you've probably seen them before. Santiago, there are basically no drows anywhere near Foden or Azerfeld, so I doubt you would have ever seen them. Uh, Bader, same with you. There's not many Except drows. Gray there. skin, white hair. I'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, you're close enough. So, looking for a drow with gray skin and white hair. It shouldn't be too hard to find. Said he was tall. So, hopefully, it'll mm -hmm. stick out a little bit. They tend to be tall. At least the ones I've seen have been. Ugh, just glad to be on solid fucking land. The drow in this world typically come in like three distinct shades of blue, green, and gray. Uh, typically, variations of those colors. <laughs> Bro, they're fucking Shrek. Not like bright fucking Shrek green, like gray. What are you green. doing in my swamp? <laughs> anyway, oh, Chris. If Shrek was gray and an elf, <laughs> they would be Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one to one. Justin, is there any water nearby, and, like where we're walking? Yeah, there's a the whole continent island. You are 100% surrounded by water on all sides if you walk far enough. But I meant, it, like, in the direction that we're walking. I don't want to walk back over uh, the river or stream. far enough. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say there's probably the stream nearby. You can hear it. It's not, like, following, like, concurrent to where you're going. But like, there's, like, a little bridge going over, like, a small river as you guys are walking. Okay. Because I... I think I probably hasn't been sub fully submerged in water for a couple of days, so he, you know, <laughs> gotta keep nice and moist. He's gonna, gonna, gonna dry like, out. Oh, well, he won't technically dry out. But he's gonna, he's gonna... <laughs> should, should, the thing is, though, is I'm like, should I tell any of the group that I'm leaving, or would it just be funnier just to see him sprinting off into the distance? <laughs> Yes. I think it's way funnier to sprint off into the distance. Personally. Friends, friends, friends. Do we go, even go, go, see go. the water source that he's running towards, or can he smell it before we <laughs> see it? That is a thousand rod. <laughs> yeah, he'll just kind of like look around for a second, and then he immediately is like, oh, it's over there. And he just goes and he just breaks off running, like, what? Just. What? Line. <laughs> Just like dive into the water like a beautiful 10 out of 10. As you're mm -hmm. diving, suddenly realize wait a second, I'm drawing unless you're still in my pocket. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> you splash down into the water. You hear this like panic. <laughs> He's like squeaking and like squealing from your pocket as the rat is suddenly submerged out of nowhere. 
<laughs> and then I'm the trauma come, returns. I'm gonna come back up, but I'm gonna put him on. There. <laughs> didn't even bother to take your cloak off. <laughs> yeah, it's soaking wet. Is there anything good down there, though? Like, no, I wouldn't rock? think so. Although, um, someone does, so you're kind of like splashing on the water, and the rest of the group kind of comes up behind you, I imagine. Don't kid mm -hmm. cat the fuck. Um, we just see him run off, and then we start running <laughs> after him, and then we hear a splash, and we don't run as fast, because we're like, yeah. oh. <laughs> Oh. This is what he's doing. <laughs> um, Aaron, down the stream, and the rest of you know this as well, there is, seems to be, um, a younger woman who apparently, you can see, like, some wet clothes in her hand. She's got them in a the basket, she's looking at you all of you and going, um, so she's wearing very, very heavy clothes, you notice. A cloak similar to yours, uh, I think, yeah, that you are not, are now, are now not wearing, by the way, your wings and horns out and feel full of you. Um, but she's wearing a heavy cloak as well, and you notice that most of her body is covered up. Well, her head is not, though. Um, and she kind of looks at you all with her basket and, like, wet clothes, which are obviously not done. But she still sees all of you, and she kind of, like, backs up and starts, like, quickly walking away towards Bugs. Oh, I thought she was going to be fishing, and I thought, right. how funny would it be to pull on the hook and pretend oh. to be a fish? <laughs> I guess I may swim a little bit further downstream to like, not to like catch up with her. I guess if she is she walking like along side of the stream. Oh no, she, or is she, she's like, walking towards Barb's away from the stream. Oh, bye, down. lady. <laughs> He's like floating on his back. He's like, oh. like an otter. <laughs> uh, what like are you you? you have all seen this. You have seen Kit Kat jump into the water. You've seen this uh, lady. Kind of like hurriedly power walk off. Right. We need to make ourselves as inconspicuous as possible. Hey. We gotta get going. Stop harassing the townspeople. We haven't even gotten into the town yet. I really want that meat in the Tramalich. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. I guess I'll get out and I'm just like. Swamp monster extraordinaire, like you know, of course, cause it's just soaking wet. And I, I guess, well, you know, I guess we can continue on walking oh, towards yeah. following that that one lady. But I'm also gonna keep the eye an eye out for any other rats that are not drama lich mm -hmm. okay. for him to eat. I'll keep that in mind. You see one? It's in your pocket. Oh. So are y'all headed towards him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're back. gonna follow the river? <laughs> I see. Um, so, I, I uh... Keep his hood up. <laughs> <laughs> keep it on! Um, it's not too far. It's a pretty short walk. And uh, pretty quickly, you all are kind of entering into the town. And the first thing you immediately notice is pretty much all of the woods immediately surrounding the town have been pretty succinctly and pretty, um organized, in a way, have been cut down and chopped, uh, likely for lumber of some sort. Um, you can probably assume it's a lumber town, but it's, it's, it's a decent size. It's a couple thousand people, and it's bustling a little bit. Um, the ship captain kind of forgot to give you any more directions besides look for this drow person. Um, Sammy, out of curiosity, where is this person? Are they at, like... Where? The where is he? I assume that after like ten minutes worth of standing there, I'm like, <sighs> and I'm gonna fucking go to town. You're gonna head into town I have as no well. No choice in the matter. It, okay. it, it's the only other place I could think of that that I could find them. Um, are all of you heading in, or what are you all doing? Describe it. Yeah, we're heading in. Well, I'm gonna take the airship guys in advice to heart, and I'm gonna un have Yui undo her ponytail so mm -hmm. her hair hides her ears. Now okay. just. <laughs> it's very cute. Um, you all kind of head into town, and for the most part, uh, you do get some sideways glances because you are newcomers. They're not super common, tiny town like this. But for the most part, you don't attract much attention. Um. Although, Santiago, you do get a couple of looks. However, they're not looks how you are used to. You're used to people looking at you like, what the fuck is that thing? Are they okay? Are they, like, you're used to people looking at you, 
looking away and looking back at surprise when they realize that you're not a person on a horse. Um, here, though, people look more surprised that you're there. Not, like, shocked that you exist, but, like, surprised that you have come into town. And you can hear a couple whispers, like, what the fuck are you doing here? It's kind of weird. Do they need something? Do they need anything? Um, what is everyone's passive perception? 17. Mm-hmm. Oh. 13. Chat. What's it? Uh-huh. I should be 16, because I... My proficiency went up, so 16. Or, our proficiency went up. Um... Does anyone have above or equal to 16 or 17? I'm 16. 16. I'm 17. Uh-huh. You don't? <laughs> Aaron sadly. Aaron I think only Vader and my character can see anything. Maya, uh, what's your passive perception? 16. Oh, yeah, so Maya can as well. So, Santiago, Vador, and Dare, even though he's not. Sammy for now. Um, you, haven't, you haven't been in town for a while. And obviously Santiago and Vader haven't been here ever. But there is a kind of air of tension. Um, even if you haven't been here before, you can tell this place is only a lot more lax. Um, however, now everyone is moving quickly and efficiently and hurriedly. And there's this air of real tension and energy as if everyone's expecting something. Or it's kind of like... And, and it's that kind of air, but the entire town, like everybody, mm-hmm. even the children, are kind of moving around hurriedly, and there's not a lot of talking, not all laughing. Although there, it's not completely dead, it's not completely silent, there is some. But it, it's just kind of air of anxiety, I don't know, so. hmm. uh, I imagine Dareth just kind of quickly looks around, and he's just like, I should, I should find them. Uh, what are you all doing? Okay. Um, do you want to get into the town? Kind of <laughs> local water and hole with your very it's tall true. gray men. A good few, the like, kind of like a, a good few blocks of town, and you all kind of like come into like this larger kind of, you'd almost call it that town square or something. And immediately you notice, very plainly, stands out a little. It doesn't stand out immensely, but he stands out more when you never ever before. You see this. Do you want to describe yourself, Sam? Uh, stupid tall, at least eight foot four, um, kind of tall drow man sitting in what looks almost to be like weird, almost you could describe like farmer clothing in a way, of purple, he's wearing like purple cloak, blue, yellow, uh, blue, yellow, kind of with purple trimming on the kind of weird poncho he's wearing, and he's wearing like simple, like basic pants, no shoes, um, he has a very large walking stick with him that is draped in a what you could almost describe as a ribbon um with different types of like runic kind of writing on it or at least what you can tell um and it has a small lantern on it but i didn't draw it in the picture because i'm lazy um he's wearing obviously glasses he's got like three earrings on one ear but that's it uh short short uh white hair blue eyes glasses and he's kind of standing around petting on, he's kind of petting or trying to, but it doesn't look like it's really caring too much. A small dragon. Or what uh, you don't, what you may be a creature. No way. There's no way that it's out in the open. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, there's no way that's out in the open. So ignore the last part. Oh, no dragon. I like that he has little white freckles. Dwagon! He's very I, cute little white freckles. It's cute. Oh, whoa. It's cute. I, I did make him cute. I, I uh, reflected his stats better. Kind of white doodle, But he's sitting there with like a large stick in hand, kind of like with his head like on top of it. I imagine. And he's covered in moss and has a couple leaves sticking off of it. Tirith, I imagine you know this, uh, this group as well. Uh, you. So, what do you guys do? Describe on what happens. I am going to approach him. Yeah. I'm just walking straight up to him. Approach, approach. the NPC. We are I'm approaching. Also Come on. Just kind of approach on. the P side mm-hmm. glance at every now and Come then. Come on. Everyone's side glance at you. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I glance back. Win. <laughs> they kind of glance at you again and like, shit, sorry. <laughs> 
Um, I'm speaking in Sylvan because I recognize the centaur. Um, and he's saying something to Santiago, but I think only Yui knows the language, doesn't she? I think so. <laughs> he's saying, it's weird to see another centaur around here. The hunter came by, like, <laughs> what, a week ago? Are you, are you a part of that? Sorry, we don't, we're not from around here. Don't quite speak your language. He kind of like turns his head a little bit. He's like, you don't speak your native tongue. Uh, this would be my native tongue. I know some real choppy Elvis. It doesn't sound good. I'll be honest with you. I am going to have Yui speak back in Sylvan. Excuse me, are you Dareth? Yeah, that's... Now he's just talking, coming, yeah, yeah, I, I'm... just come on, I'll tell you more when we get out of here. Oh, um, I hope so. The whispers around town are growing. It's not good, come on. Okay. Yeah, I'm following. Um, do any of you want to listen in? I'm you slow you down, but... Yes. You want to yes. listen? I'm, I'm kind of. I just hanging towards the back of the group a little bit since. Everyone wants there. to listen in. Uh, go ahead and roll me a perception or investigate. No oh, perception check. Sorry, Santiago, continue. I'm just sort of hanging towards the back, like following, but I'm. I'm glancing. <laughs> uh, twenty one on perception. Does a nat 20 count for the first roll of the game? 21. Eight. Eight. Plus seven? Does a nat Why would it not seven just... count? So, 19 Sean, plus three, so um, 22. Damn. God damn. I rolled a... 21. Be here! Oh my god, all of you rolled above 20, and Aaron rolled an eight. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone... <laughs> It's at this moment, after they touch down at Clearbrook, and they meet Dareth and everything, the group continues to walk through the town. It's All the hushed whispers are getting louder and louder, and Dareth keeps egging the group to come along. He's ready to be out of the town. And as they walk along, they hear preachers kind of preaching about how tieflings and fearbolg and other races that they see to be demonic or spawns of terrible things or spawns of magic or things corrupted by magic seem to have a little bit of a racism issue and a little bit of a misconception about how everything goes. And the group kind of ends up hearing about that when they all consider standing around to talk about it for a moment. Yeah, we're so following. Gareth is really running. Gareth is almost like, he's not sprinting, but he's definitely walking at a very brisk pace. We're walking at a brisker pace. You're all headed out? Yeah. Yeah, Gareth, yeah, Gareth is I'm taking, taking um, them. You all quickly Making eyes at that guy. <laughs> uh, he sees like, you doing this, and he turns to you, and he, he begins preaching even louder. And he's like, "If you're I not turn careful, around, don't fall victim to the I turn around well. and I grab and I grab onto Kit's shoulder, and I'm like, "Not the time." No, like, okay, I understand, no, but I feel I'm, like we should argue back at this man. I'm gonna spit at him. At the, at the... This is what is wrong with our society, people. I turn and look at. I turn yeah. and look at. The, I turn and look at, uh, at, at whose name I don't know. The centaur and I go. Do you? Do you mind? I'm trying to help you, and this is not helping. Our fine crater comes to our town to rid it of sin, and I shall tell them that our society is full of it with people like you. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get on. in between Kitka and the Dude, preacher. We're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> um, he sees you like a centaur, and he's like, "Holy, oh, a, a much finer creature defending someone of this status." I, uh. I put my hand on Kitka's shoulder again, and I go, "I'm used to it too. Now, come on." I ain't standing. Do you let it go, Kitka? I just got better fucking things to do. I look at the, yeah, I say that to the preacher guy, and I turn back around and I start pushing Kit Cow along. He had better hope I don't summon a whole bunch of rats. <laughs> he had better hope. Kit Cow's gonna go murder a whole bunch of rats and then let them loose. 
Let's do you all this. Kind of like, you all kind of like push each other Gareth out. Gareth like, is under know. his breath talking in a language that nobody understands. Nobody speaks uh, serpent. You all head out. Into the woods. Um, is it is talking? a couple hour walk. It is a couple hour walk to where Gareth is leading you. Are you leading him to the waterfall, Sam? Straight there. I'm not Okay. Then it is a couple hour time. walk. Are you all going to talk a little bit while you're walking? Or... Um, at this point, once we get far enough into the forest, there's a little, I guess you can call it, I don't know, reptile, I guess, and it kind of slinks onto my shoulder, and I'm like, ah, hello. Oh, what do we have here? Uh, 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 Ponyo. Kit guys got something like that, too. I guarantee you there's nothing like this that you have. I think Aaron's busy, but let's continue. I know, but... We can imagine Buttercup slithers up and says something annoying. Oh, oh yeah, I know exactly what Buttercup would say, but Aaron's not here to hear it, and they're the only one I can. So. Hmm. What an interesting creature. Uh, she's a little moody. Um, Especially right now. Yui, it is looking directly at your bag. What? What is it, Spanyo? Stop being rude. It sends you an image in your head, like a feeling of want. No, I'm sorry. What's in here is not for you right now. I'm per I'm watching something for a friend. I apologize if she's being rude. Oh no, no, it's it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly fine. She just has a tendency to be greedy. So if she takes something, just let me know. Otherwise I will dismiss her. Oh uh, by the way, Derek. Uh, remember what I, I mean, told you about. I remember. What? I'm. I am ignoring it. Making sure. As making sure. best as I can. What did you say, Maya? I'm. Um. I sorry. My dad was talking to me. Um. <clears throat> and he was following up. But. I apologize for being rude, uh, Centaur. I'm not sure what your name is. Um. Usually, I usually have only seen kind running around in their own in their own groups, really. Yeah, well, I from around here again. Cannot stress that enough. I'm I'm aware. Believe me, the captain already told me. Oh my! I wonder what he what details he gave you. Uh, it's nothing major. Just said you're not from around here, and they could use my help. So, mm -hmm. but I'd do the nice thing that I've always been doing for him and helping people he brings along. Yui, um, Ponyo, the weird winged lizard that Dareth has, has climbed down his arm. He's wrapped around him. It's like at level with your bag, and it's like just kind of like, like clinging to Dareth's arm. She's a little, she's a little, she's very green, and she's got yellow eyes that are kind of like really glowy. She's very, she's very, she's very spirit, kind of. Mm. Aren't you a pretty lady? I'm keeping my hand close to my bag. <laughs> One hand close yeah. to the bag, but the other holding out two fingers to the dragon. Just let him sniff the hand. It does. It gives you a little, it's not, not like a painful one, it's a little bite. <laughs> like a cat. Indeed, a precious girl. Like a. <laughs> like a uh, it kind of occurs to Jerry, he's like, have you. I guess you've never seen a pseudo dragon, have you? No, I don't think I have. Oh, that's what she is. Ah. If you've ever no. heard of dragons, it's. Dragon. That strikes me as you don't know. I assume I know what a normal dragon is. There are basically fairy tales of dragons from where you guys are. I've heard I've read of dragons in the stories in stories, but I've never seen one in person. Quite the I've picture. she's how do I put it? Um, she's special. <laughs> she special. Okay. Uh, Ponyo, Ooh. please, please stop bothering them. No. I know! I, oh. I know! I think I know what the language is now. 
Um, after a few, after a little bit of walking. He he um, says something telepathically to her, Dustin. What's that? You want to say? Uh, okay. uh, no, I'm pretty sure you can guess what Gareth is telling Ponyo to stop doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I got you. Um, but a, a little bit of walking later, and you all start to hear the bubbling and the splashing and crashing of a small waterfall. Mm. I'm gonna lead them into like the clearing where like the big area is and yeah, yeah. take a fucking seat. So you all kind of head in here and you see this large kind of clearing. Um, the trees themselves have been pushed away and the dirt is very disturbed. It looks like something's been like messing around in it quite a lot and quite a lot over time. <sighs> Everything should be fine here. I apologize for being kind of, you could say camp. Um, I apologize for not being more forthcoming. Uh, the prey door is rather close. and Let's just say, I don't know if you know, but magic is not a thing to be showing off or doing if you have abilities like that. Second, fourth, I should probably enlighten you on what a prey door is. Uh, think, um, big wig, magic person, um, who can destroy you if she wanted to. Is the wig part of the destruction, or? It's a metaphor. <laughs> ah, so someone up there She's a little sexy. bit in the high society lights who's a little bit above the law, as it were. A uh, part of the law, more like makes them. Ah, which makes them above them anyway. Along with the people right below are her. The shit in every world. Well, yes, but I wouldn't take them on if I were you. Mm -hmm. Believe me, they can already, they can already oh, sense no. magic. In fact, me being there is the be worst thing imaginable. I is she sexy, hard. though? Yeah, if you like being dead within five seconds. Fair enough. It's pretty hot, though. <laughs> Some people find that alluring. Let me let me ask you all a question before I do something. Have you ever heard of a fear bulb? It's easy. Have we, Justin? Have we? No, never, ever, oh. ever, ever, ever. Heard I haven't. This another. I'm gonna person disperse my room? magic. And as he does, like he sits there and he says some words to himself. And he kind of sits there for a second, and as you watch, he kind of starts shifting form uh, into what would look like this. It is a same difference, but he has little, like, hooven feet. He has little, like, kind of like hooven feet. He's wearing the same clothing. He has his staff, but he turns into this kind of big, hairy, kind of, like, reddish uh, kind of guy with, like, long, almost cow-like ears. And his nose is flatter, and his hair is more blonde, and it's a lot of hair. Hmm. Felt I should show you my other form in case you were to ever see me walk into town and come back that way. Okay. Uh, Darius kind of stands back up to like his full height, which is at least, like I said, 8'4". Oh, but, man. Huh. Consider oh. yourself safe. It's kind of what I do for the captain anyway. He helps me and I help him. I am open for questions. Believe me, apparently I've heard wind and tail that you've fallen from, and he points up there. Yes. Yes, we have. Yes. Well, I've been here at least for about two years now. So, Do you also come from the sky? or? Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm from here. I'm from technically here. It was either. So I, if you have disguising magic for your friend, I would suggest it. I can only perform it on myself. I'm not even a tiefling. I'm a sky serpent. It's the <laughs> difference. They'll see, they'll see you as a demon nonetheless. My cousin's a demon. Uh, Darius is kind of, like, looking over into the kind of lakish area. He's, like, staring intently, like, at the water. 
Is there, is there water. something in the water? I was considering catching a fish was all. Oh. I'll catch some fish. Can I, um, do like a quick security scout just around kind of the perimeter of the area? Just get a feel so, for, for the zone? Um, how we're gonna be staying far here? Um, the clearing do you want to go? Oh, not that far. Just enough so I can, like, get a good visual on what's around here. Okay. Woods. <laughs> the forest. Um, you kind of, like, look around. Roll me We're in Minecraft. perception or investigation. Jareth's higher. So, what can you tell us about the general area? Uh, Jareth, was it? Uh, everything. Alright. Just well, name something and I'll tell you. It's kind of what we feel we're best at. Mm. Knowing the okay. land and nature. Well, I guess first off, me? then... Yes. Why don't you tell me about yourself? What brought you here? Let's... Oh, that's a long story. Let's just say that my race works in the kind of the race that centaurs do. Except we're not as proud and sometimes obnoxiously rude. We're more... A little bit more of kin to just kind of peaceful, go with the flow kind of things. I heard that. Uh, <laughs> we work in a way of clans, and our duty is to always put the clan first. And well, I caused trouble in mine, and now I'm. He kind of like looks somber for a minute, and he kind of sits there, and he like closes his eyes, and he takes off like the fake glasses because he still realizes he's wearing them. I've been ostracized is the word that I feel like some people would use. Excommunicated. I say from mine, and I'm no longer allowed to return mm. for any reason. And you ended up here in this around this town. Uh, well, the captain ended up being at the island for some reason, and I hitched a ride from him to this ah. island. I see. <sighs> well, Gareth, we are hoping a friend of ours will be coming back to get us, but in the meantime, we need a way to be safe. Food, he he water. bends down towards your level because he's like, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be rude. I realize I'm kind of tall. You're fine. Most people tend to be about about your friend's height, pointing to Santiago, about that height. But if it helps and makes you feel any better, I would, I'll disguise myself again if it makes it any better. No, hey, you're perfectly Santiago. fine as you are. What did you roll? Um, I got a nat twenty. Holy Plus shit! Eight. Um, you see a lot of... Uh, you can obviously tell immediately that Dareth is very, very, very experienced in traversing the wilderness and hiding his track. Um, because there are very few signs. The signs that are there are like just barely there. And it's only because you're very good at tracking and that you're very used to it um, that you're able to kind of pick out those little signs. But you can tell that Dareth is very talented in what he does. Um, the outer perimeter as well is it looks like it's mostly undisturbed that it's been like forged a few times there has been some hunting that goes down here um and you do also notice a few feet out um some hoof prints um that have been sunken into some dirt that has hardened over time just left a little impression um there aren't enough to make a trail or a track but there's some definite hoof prints there um, and they're not mine from of like read no they're definitely not the background okay are they they're reminiscent all, of Dareth's? No, no, they are like a, they're like a horses. And oh, I know what little, it is. They're a little larger than yours, on the I know what it is. Um, what else is fun? um you also like see I... a couple surprisingly some scraps of metal embedded in the dirt. You don't see anything else around it, but you do find some rusty scraps of metal that have been long buried and forgotten in the dirt. Just real small pieces. Are, are they're just like scraps, or are they like arrowheads or bullet cases? No, they look like like scraps of like 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 worked on metal, not like weaponry, but like metal. Think that like junkyard metal. And like yeah, like almost like mm -hmm. junkyard metal. Like someone tore off a tiny piece of a car, and it somehow ended up here. 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it. Okay. You cut yourself. You get fucking tetanus. You die. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> 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 oh, no, um, like well, I was saying, um, it's small enough to like put into your pocket pretty easily. Speaking of, I never got your names. You obviously know mine, but that's just in your tongue. I, we Fibbok have no use for names. I chose a name so that way it would be easier to communicate with people. Hey, Tar. Alright. He's kind of like making mental notes to himself. You may call me Yui. It's rather... It, it's fitting. I'm Kitka. This is Buttercup and Drama Land. <laughs> he's holding up when he's got like he's got You're a bitch. bitch. Okay. Um, I'm actually going to uh, use one of my charges, which I didn't roll, and I'm going to Have cast a... uh, Speak with Animals okay. through the staff. You do that just in time to hear You're a bitch from Buttercup. He kind of like looks at Buttercup with a smile, and he's going to go. Well, I don't think that's very nice for somebody of your stature and nature on top of that. And he's basically kind of poking fun. And he's like, you know, you should be nicer to people that take care of you. He's a spy. We must end him. He's not a spy. <laughs> like holding him so he doesn't go over there and like... So the rest of you just see Dareth talking to Buttercup. And Buttercup like angrily hissing and like ah, 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 in the air in front of him. Oh my! I think he said. I think he did something that made him unhappy. Yeah. Let's just say I had. He 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 look, He turns over his shoulder and he smiles. He's like, let's just say, a sphere book have a natural thing for talking to animals. Oh. Uh, Ponyo has climbed up onto your shoulder and is now hissing at Buttercup. And hey, Buttercup nice. here go. What, did what, you are, what are the feelings? What are the, what are what are what are the feelings I'm getting for the dragon? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pet the dragon. Insults. She's not really a, a friendly one, but I'm gonna like let her pop onto my arm. I shouldn't stick my fingers in with? there, but like, like, stick your finger in there. Are you wearing any jewelry <laughs> or anything? Me? Yeah. Oh. No, you don't have many valuable things on you. No, of course not. She's very disinterested. Okay, making sure. And I speak, okay, since I speak serpent, dragons count by extension. <laughs> I don't know. Nope. She does. I, I, think you have to to no. I can tell you that myself, no. Yeah. What if you know also, draconic? How <laughs> about I just tell you all? It's a familiar. <laughs> <laughs> Um. Anyway, um, what what it it's kind of late. Shame. If you want to, you go, all go ahead. suddenly as you're talking, there's the sound of heavy footsteps, heavy rushed, panicked footsteps stumbling in the woods behind. I'm you. immediately going after the sound. You're I'm going to the lake. Um, yeah. Who else? Is anyone else going? Or... I'm gonna go. Wait, what am I? I'll what's go. going on with me, Je Justin? You can't say that while I'm in the woods, <laughs> Justin. It's not you, Santiago. Uh, right. However, you are there when you suddenly see um, the same young woman you had seen earlier, the one who had seen Kit Kat in the river, suddenly like, burst out from behind a couple of trees, uh, dirty, scratched up. She's obviously fallen a few times. Uh, basically, half like part of her body completely wrapped up in her cloak. And she like almost plows into you head first because she did not see you there at all. And I immediately cast my detect magic. By the way, Ju my detect magic, my disguise self, Justin. Okay. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm gonna um kind of kind of point her towards the direction of where the camp was, where everyone else is. Um, and I'm gonna yeah. draw my weapon and stand like whatever's chasing her is like gonna have to look at me now. Okay. Um, she kind of like she almost crashes into you, but she like falls backward, hits a tree, and she's like. A centaur, you have to hide me. You have to hide me now, please. Yeah, get, go get back that way. There's a camp. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and she like pushes past you, and she runs in the direction you like pointed. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Darius is walking with the rest of everyone, but he's got, like, his staff out in front of everyone to kind of, like, keep, like, almost just saying, like, stay behind me. Uh, you all kind of approach, and as you do, this, again, once again, a very panicked, very scruffed up, very dirty young woman, the one you've seen at her before, uh, kind of bursts, like, right past you guys, and she, like, looks at you for a second while continuing to run in the direction of the other point. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't do anything, I didn't do anything. No, it's fine, it's fine. What, what, what's going you on? Okay. that? Do I, like, hear or see anything that was coming after her? Or... Uh, Kit Kat, where are you going? I'm going to stay with Lady, because I want to have a talk with her. <laughs> about <laughs> Okay, no, yeah, go ahead. Um, so, Santiago, uh, Yui and Vader, you two come up behind Santiago, but Santiago, you're the one that hears this, because your perception is really high, and you're also in front. Uh, you hear several, several sets of footfalls, uh, very steady, very even, almost like marching, uh, along with the sound of someone cutting through trees, basically. Not like through the trunks, but like slashing through and easily pushing their way through the thick and dense forest. I'm the and Lorax! I speak for the trees! You hear the clanking of really heavy, thick metal armor. And pretty quickly, from behind the foliage, you start to see colors, and you see this group of people. You see... Um, three people who you obviously need to pay more attention to, and another three people behind them. The three people in front, though, there is this blonde woman with this really, really big, long hair holding this really ornate, intricate staff and these enormous flowing white robes uh, that you would expect to be really dirty and cut up or at least messed up in some way that are, like, big in span clean. Like, they just came out of the wash even though she's been trudging through the forest. Um, to her right is this younger man with brown, really, really short hair um, holding this really heavy shield covered in plate armor um, who instantly sees you, draws his sword and points it at you. And to her left, um, this drow uh, with jet black hair and kind of bluer skin uh, that's wearing a mask uh, and a sword at his hip. Um... Behind them, the three people are way less featured, almost like intentionally. Uh, they're all wearing the exact same mask. They're all similar in height. And they are all wearing very, very plain, dirty, white, like, guard uniforms, basically. And they see you and they stop. And especially with you pointing your gun at them. And um, the man to the right of the lady goes, HALT! Uh, Darius kind of, like, same. walks around the front, moving. and he's just like, Excuse me, um, what seems to be the problem? You are in the presence of Praetor Elise, one of the five of the world government. We are tracking down a criminal, one that has believed to be coming through this area. If you know where this person is or are holding them, you will immediately surrender this criminal. Um, pray, pray say, what, what, what did they do? What, is, what did they look like? Their crimes are not in what's questioned here. In what's questioned is their location. It's kind of hard to tell you if I've seen anyone if I won't know what they look like, sir. A young woman infected with malignance. I'm afraid I don't know what that is. <laughs> Malignance, that right. sounds like a very um, foreign concept. I don't think I've ever heard of it before. Regardless, I can't Have say I've seen anyone seen pass through here. a young woman or not? No. Nope, I can't say I've seen anyone. Um, Dareth is staying silent because he sh he he's just kind of like... Beta and Yui, you're the ones that answered, so both of you need to roll me a deception check. Kit-Kat, you're currently with the girl, right? Uh-huh. You're the only one. So, uh, Dareth, where did we drop the girl off? Uh, back towards, like, the waterfall area. Modify okay. 20. Modif uh, natural 20. Oh, shit. Plus 10 for deception. Yeah! That's an impossible check. You just got the impossible. Okay, anyway. 35. Uh, we're going to jump back, <laughs> gonna jump yes! back to Yes! Five. Um... Aaron, you are currently with this lady. She is freaking out. She sees you. Um, she, you can tell she is scared of you. 
but at the same time, you're like her only hope. So she's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please, please. You have to help me, please. How I'm far away is this, how far away is this camp, Justin? Not very far. Like, um, can I use my wicked mind feature to message Kitka, and all I need to say is just hide her like now. It's I thirty feet. Yeah, it's further than that. You said not very far. So he's like, we're in the camp. No, we're not. We're like a little that ways would, away. That would You're be like right on the outskirts of it, and like you. Put her like right. She's she's not, she's not far, but she's not thirty feet close. Uh, but she, air, a kid, can, what are you saying to her? He's just like staring at her. Well, yeah, for right now, because I'm kind of like everybody's been mean to me since I got here. Like, what's going on, man? But <clears throat> am I sensing any? Well, a good a good place to hide that I thought would be pretty good. She would hate it. She would. She would really hate it. As if we went into the lake, but I can give her oxygen because I can breathe underwater. <laughs> that that works. Sure, sure. Wait, are you I gonna be like, like just be in your mouth, giving her air? <laughs> it's not preferable. Be a really good place to hide. It would be a really good place to hide. Yeah, and something no one would expect it. She was asking me. She was asking to be hidden. So I think I'm gonna to the need plan you to not freak out. Okay. 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 Anything. Anything. Please. You can't breathe underwater, right? Maybe. Duh. I'm not sure. I don't know. Time to find out. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, we need to not scream because this is really important. <laughs> God, this sounds like a fucking murder. I'm gonna roll like, yeah. really back to see if she screams or not. He's gonna grab her and jump into the water. I may. She can't I scream. May she's in the water. Hand, I may put a hand over her mouth and she starts screaming before we get into the water. Okay. But I'm pretty fast. <laughs> okay, that's true. She starts screaming. Uh, oh, yeah. and there's like ah! you all um roll me a a sleight of hand check to see how fast you manage oh, to do that. Uh, <laughs> Alright. Okay, so that's a ah, I need to find somewhere better to roll. I've just been rolling over here. Thirteen. Is that plus? Um, I would say that was that... plus. I would say that's 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 good enough that you managed to cut off most of it, but there is for you guys who hear like a sh like a really sharp shrill <laughs> from like a little ways away that echoes in the woods. Uh, and do you like get into the water, Aaron? I'm gonna get into the water and Are I'm you... like holding her so that she's not flailing around a whole bunch, and I am like, <laughs> oh, she is she is trying, she is so freaking bad. out. There's so many bubbles coming. Um, but as you're and I, I'm like. Her, as you're watching her, Aaron, suddenly a part of her skin, not like on her neck, but like on her shoulder, begins to like morph and like wiggle. And you watch as you watch as these weird gray, almost gill like protrusions start forming on her neck as she's like freaking out inside the water. So I'm just, I'm like, can I talk underwater to her? Um, you can try. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, you have. She's still freaking out. Here. She hasn't noticed yet. She's still freaking out. It's like she's flailing. She's trying to scream, and there's bubbles going in there. I am. Only we have to spell calm emotions. <laughs> yeah, Long, gonna like, cast the spell calm emotions while the I magic Nazis are staring at you. I have no spells, but I could totally best her. <laughs> yeah. check. I'm oh, yeah. no, no, no. She, is, she is so physically weak. There's not even a, there's not even a check. There's Fucking not knock her the hell out, dude. Well, I don't want to do that. Then what if her what if her gills? I don't know. I, I feel like I you need, need to be my mouth directly on hers. To use gills, right? Get her to stop. <laughs> because this is really this seems like a done. rape situation. Okay, okay so Kit Kat is not her. Or bad word. 
Uh, we're going to jump back to the other group. Um, you are all facing down Praetor Elise, who um, her right hand is currently speaking to you, the sword drawn and pointed at you. Um, please. You rolled uh, really high uh, that shit. Um, please, I've lowered friend, my please, rifle lower. at this point. I'm still holding it, but I don't have it pointed at anyone. Put it away. As it they stands, will, it will, will cause you trouble from attacking innocent civilians. However, if we learn that you are harboring this criminal, you put yourself and everyone around you in danger, and we will consider you criminals as well. Uh, he slowly, like, kind of snatches his sword, and the group of six uh, continue on past you, and as they do, uh, they're starting to walk, and one of the guards in the masks and the dirty white clothes doubles over, and you watch as part of like their hood that had covered up the mask as well begins to rip and tear as a horn is like pushing itself out of their skin. But no one else even begins to care. They just keep walking. And this, whatever this person is, is like on the ground, hands and knees, a horn pushing itself out from their skin, and they get up and they keep walking and nothing happens. With a brand new horn coming out of their fucking face. Is, like, is not that normal? That's, that's normal. That's normal. Uh, okay. Just, just come on, let's go. We have no business with them and they have no business with us. Yeah. We should hope that they never have business with us. I agree. And I'm going to um, walk they... them back towards... Like, trying to... Walking back towards, but veering off a little bit to kind of throw off. Yeah. But then once I feel it's safe, run, going back. Uh, what are you all doing? Uh, Aaron, not you, Aaron. You're currently under the water, trying to keep her from screaming hope... and freaking out. The luck sauce. I hope, um... <laughs> that gives you an idea. What... What business does the world government have here? They're the Praetor is visiting. Mm. Well, let's so, not hang around here too long. Uh, no. That was that was my whole point. Yeah, as we turn to start going back, I'm going to hang towards the back of the group um, and kind of, did I, can I see which way they ran off or is the woods too thick? Um, you get um, an idea of the direction they're heading in. Um, it is, they're heading basically to the right of the campsite. Not directly towards where you guys came from, but they're basically skirting around the edge of it. And they might enter into clearing if they happen to find that. Um. I'm going to suggest that we move a little bit away from this. Like, at least away from it. Hmm. Like, Dar like, Dareth is basically saying, like, you know, I don't think this spot is as safe as it was last week. Hmm. Where would you suggest Second that? Uh, way, where's Kipka? Uh, uh, somewhere. And... Yes, where? You left him alone with- oh my god. I'm fucking- I'm going back. <laughs> you went to the clearing? Where's yeah. the house? The Kit Kat and the woman is nowhere to be seen. Uh, Ponyo, could you go around in the water and see if you could find them? Uh, what's that you notice some like ripples or disturbance? Mm. Uh, but yeah, Ponyo bubbles from the woman trying to water. scream underwater. <laughs> and Ponyo kind of goes up, and they see they kind of look down. They see some mental images uh, there of two forms in the water, like latched onto each other. Uh, one of them flailing around wildly, and the other like holding on to them. Yeah. Um. Dareth kind of laughs a little bit. <laughs> what it? What it's is it? <laughs> um. Uh, okay, it doesn't do what I thought it did. Um, I would need another invocation to talk through my familiar. Um, I don't know where they are. I'm going to use my awakened mind ability, and I'm going to telepathically tell Hit. 
be quiet for the both of you need to be quiet but we need to leave now so like come out of the water kind of a thing or if you can at least get up the waterfall without being seen up there would be preferable for now I'm gonna be keeping watch while they're talking you can't see this talking. This is just me staring at the water. And pointing. Uh, what is, what is I'm not pointing. Right? This isn't message. Oh, it's like message. I guess we're just watching. Watching as you me stand stare there. Stare into the lake without explaining anything. I'm just going to assume there's some magic bullshit happening <laughs> and I'm going to keep fucking watch. Can I see okay. them in the water at this point now that he's staring into the water? <laughs> um, I imagine you could like look over and see yeah, the two dark forms. It's one, by the way, the lady, the lady one dark is form, down. and one bright pink form. <laughs> Can I mess it mean, her? I'm not, I'm not. No, I'm not. Yui's oh. just like, why would you do that? Aaron, uh, kick out under the water. The lady's beginning to calm down, um, but her cloak has come undone, and uh, some like wrappings around her arm has as well. And you can see her entire right arm, which is previously completely covered up, is this weird gray, you would almost call it clay-like, and it's covered in these tiny little protruding keratin structures that are all, like, sharp, and it's like, her arm looks like it is fucked up. And as it's becoming uncovered, the water that you're in is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Okay. I'm going to... Uh, Dareth is just saying, if you can get up the waterfall, that's all that matters. Like, some eyeballs out of the water. (laughs) Like, what? (laughs) So, I'm I'm asking you in your head, do you think you can do that? Carrying a woman might be a little difficult, unless she's cooperating with me. She's calmer, but she's still a little freaking out. And the water you're in is getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Like it's it's starting I'm gonna to like really up. raise it down. I'm I'm gonna pick her up so her head is outside of the water so that she can talk to other people. <laughs> okay. So, um, you can lift her up and she's out of the water. By now she's calm enough that she doesn't immediately scream. Although she's like, <sighs> she's like she's like she's just panting. She's exhausted. The water is like starting to get. Uncomfortably warm, could get, or uncomfortably hot. See, you two need to get out of there. I don't know what you want to do about that. <laughs> get out of the water. Get out of the water. <laughs> he's he's, he's waving for you to come over. He, yeah, Sorry, he sees the woman because he thought you only hid in there, but <laughs> I'm like walking out of the water, but I'm like holding her like a little child. <laughs> She's like a little older up. <laughs> Um, as you do that, her arm, which was previously, like, being cooled down by the water, is beginning to, like, bubble and, like, almost glow, you'd call it. What? And you all will see now her really gross, gray, keratin, like, covered arm and that is now bubbling and beginning to glow as she's, like, being pulled out of the water. Hmm. Uh, well, Let's I- get a move on. Dareth takes note, but he's saying, let, let, let's let move. Uh, oh, okay. We can ask questions later, but for right now, let's just move. Oh, goodness. Um, you pulled her out. She's beginning to calm down. She's still, like, panting. She can't say anything. But she's, like, hurriedly wrapping her arm back up as best she can. Yeah. Dareth kind of, like, extends his arms, and he's like, if you can't carry her, I can. Oh no, I'm perfectly fine to carry her. I do right. strength is my Do you lift Kit Kat? What? Does Kit Kat lift? lift? Because barbarian. I can bench like 420. Yeah, he does. That's literally like his whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> barbarian is unga bunga strunk. I have a so are fear bowl. They, their carrying capacity is anyway, counted as one size larger stop. than theirs. Carrying big sizes. Like Goliath? <laughs> uh, Fearbulk. Oh. Uh, so you're now, uh, so uh, Kikia, you are now carrying and holding this shivering lady who's wrapping her I guess I'll carry her, like, bridal style since that'd be easier. Hmm. 
Uh, what are the rest of you doing? Uh, Dareth is trying to lead everyone away from the waterfall area. I'm gonna go with Dareth. Vader and Santiago? <sighs> Y'all in, I, hope this is a what, the, I hope this isn't I what he meant. <laughs> I'm still keeping lookout. Do, is there any sort of... Are they too far away now for me to even like kind of hear... Roll me kind of a shuffling or... Feet hitting dirt. Feet. Feet. Feet picks. We need some world government feet pick. 23. Shut up. 23. <laughs> <laughs> Don't see or hear any of the rest of them, but mm -hmm. peeking out behind one of the tree, standing completely still like a statue, you see one of the masked um, guards behind them with the keratin horn now pushing its way through their hoods. You can't see any expression because it's covered in this like completely featureless mask and their entire body is as still as a statue. And they are just staring almost like directly at you or the scene. We got a visitor. If you'd like to come mm. out. Maybe you can leave unharmed. They don't no speak. Response. What is that? <sighs> fodder. Out. Oh, fodder? In the you open, could come on, prob see you. It doesn't talk, Centaur. Can't follow orders? Not yours. It, it's, I don't see or hear anyone else, just that one. Nope, just that one. Am I gonna- You could probably shoot it and it wouldn't matter. Cautiously stick a tep step towards it. It does not move. There's no flinch. There's no movement. You're not even sure it's breathing. I'm I'm still holding my rifle. I'm not pointing yeah, it. Yeah, I got you. But, um, I would suggest if you have a weapon that doesn't make a lot of noise, you could probably get rid of it. Uh, you throw my javelin. Is that an it? Nobody knows what they are. They're just more of lackeys for the government. You lackeys say we can easily it. get rid of it. Let's find out what's inside. If you want to, go ahead. It's none of my business. I'm gonna approach it. Okay. Oh, cautiously. No movement. I just gonna let me walk up behind it where it's like sitting it's not sitting it's like standing stock still yeah yeah it's like like completely i'm gonna like walk there's there's kind of part of your brain that's like is this even a thing like is it just a statue it's like someone pranking me because it is like it, it, there's like no signs of is it a cardboard cut out <laughs> like even i'm gonna go up to like like i i could reach out and grab him yeah. You know what do. Just doesn't move. Nope. It doesn't uh, turn to it watch you. Is it wearing you. a mask? Yes, it is. It's wearing a completely featureless mask that has like two eye holes that are like even like covering oh, cloth. Hold this see. mask. You can't I'm see gonna... like you can't see any inch of skin. Yeah, I'm gonna reach for the mask. Okay. I'm gonna try to take it off. Uh, you pretty easily just pull it up. Uh, the hood kind of falls back as well. And you see this. You're not really sure if it's a man or a woman. It could be a woman, but it also could be a very like emaciated or feminine man. Um, with this gray skin. And you can see all these tiny little keratin like exposures. Kind of like the woman's arm that you just pulled out of the wet river. Um, with these completely dead eyes just staring straight ahead that don't even have any color see i told you what is it militaster militasters they're fodder for the government they're just i could care less about the things monsters creatures what no, oh, right. No one, no one but absolute high up uh, world governments 
know or what they are, how to create them or anything like that. Come on, we need to get yeah. out of here. Take the thing with us if it's going to let you carry it. We're just going to pick it up. Or just murder it now. How, how durable are these things? Not. If you're keen on killing it, then go right ahead, I guess. Oh, I'm saying you should. I don't carry weapons. I only, fun fact, know a lot of magic. Oh, I guess I'll just pull out a, the hammer that I, a light hammer, and just hit it on the head. <laughs> okay, roll me an attack roll. This should be with advantage because they can't miss. Oh yeah, it is. It's it's with advantage. Oh look, a nineteen. It <laughs> hits. Roll me damage. Six. Uh, yeah, you you. You crack your hammer over it, and it just goes into its flesh, almost like clay. And the keratin bits kind of clink up against your uh, hammer part, but you just kind of smoosh into it like Play-Doh, and it just kind of falls to the ground. Wow. <laughs> Told you. You should get better fodder. <laughs> it's their whole purpose. At least have them be useful for something. Let's go. All on wars, yeah. Go down. Come on. Yeah, we're going. Yeah, I'm gonna. Hmm. Should we? Hmm, we should probably dispose of it. I don't think they'll care. Throw it in the lake. <laughs> sure, we'll throw Bury it in it the lake. <laughs> You yeah, throw it in the lake. Mask as well. What do you? Do we keep it mask? I'm just dragging it to the fucking lake. Okay. And I need it in. Tossing it in. Are you need keeping any of its clothes? Are you taking it off or what? You just throwing it in fully clothed? I. I guess I'll keep the mask. I don't know. Trophy. Trophy. Okay. Um, me, throw me a. Perception check, Maya. Mm hmm. Nineteen. Um, as you're about to throw it in, you see a marking on its neck as its hood is fully fallen back. What's the marking? Um, it looks like letters and numbers. Like serial numbers? Uh, yeah, but the letters. Um, roll me a hard investigation check. Investimation. Investimation. Uh, 15. Not enough. Mm -hmm. Um, you see like an A and like an S, uh, but the rest of it has almost been smudged out, like clay over it. Uh, and the numbers read one, one, two, three, one. Almost like a cave to Ted. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, it, it kind of ruined the numbers and the letters. Oops. <laughs> Oops. You just gotta toss it in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you toss it into the water, and it hits with a splash, and just slowly sinks. And you all watch, like kind of like it's close. Whatever Daryl okay. was pointing. It's it's a good little walk. The hmm. woman you're carrying, Kit Kat, is still conscious. Just, uh, <sighs> like patting around. 
Well, this isn't really meant for visitors. Modern romance, baby. Modern rom. You're gonna romance this one? <laughs> no, probably not. I uh, traumatized you too much already. Are you sure? Maybe they like the trauma. Maybe they like the drowning. It's a thing. I. If maybe I talk to her more, maybe. Maybe they're into it. Uh, what do you all do with that? So, so you head uh, your way, and pretty quickly you get. Darius made. Darius made a statement. Uh oh oh is this is this past the metal barrel that you came across before there? By the way. Probably. So along the way, uh, Bador, the, I think all of you notice this. It's not hidden. I Bador, feel like we take a stop here. Let's say yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like Darius kind of goes like, "Hey, here's an interesting little here's a little tour." Uh, Bader, this interests you the most. Um, it is part of an end of a very, very large, what looks to be a metal barrel, or a metal barrel shape, uh, buried in the dirt. It's super rusted and super eroded and falling apart, and it, it's open? very large. Is it open? I have never... Uh, no. I've never been able to get into it, but... Something I found. You want to try better? I like to hang around it a lot. Let, let me look, actually. <laughs> I have a crowbar. Let me an investigation. Okay. That. This is going to be. Is this a, normal where you all come from? That is a 25 for investigation. Um, yeah, you kind of flew around it. Of things. And you find a really interesting kind of ridge at the very back of the barrel. And you find mm. what you think might be a lever to open it up. But as you pull it, it like snaps off in your hand. Mending. Mending. You're going to try and like mend it back together? Yeah. Okay, sure. You mend it and you pull it again. And there's this kind of like... <sighs> and something inside the mechanisms break. But the door like suddenly get, like, breaks loose and swings bo- uh, inward. You're pretty sure it's going outward, but something broke, and it just swung inward. Um, it's very large, and it's mostly buried in dirt. And you can see dirt having gone through a lot of, like, uh, caved-in parts of this metal shell. Um, and it's super dark inside. Do you want to try and get a better view? Yeah. Um, what do you do? Do you light a lighter or what? Is there, like... Hmm. Is there, like, a... Uh... Like a rock nearby. <laughs> yeah, sure. No. Ma- sh- magical tinkering. Give it <laughs> some, a little Wait, bit I of light. Wait, I give them that random piece of scrap metal that I found. Yeah, like, that, like, I'll, I'll use that. <laughs> you like hook it up to like a bit of light. It's like a current through it, and you kind of like lower your light down into this thing. Um, it's pretty large. You would say that like two medium-sized creatures could get in here, um, semi-comfortably. Um, but you see, you look in here, and you can see a whole slew of mechanisms and levers and dials, uh, along with a window that has long since been broken and, like, rusted and dirt-covered. Um, this thing looks like some kind of really ancient but super complicated machine. I want to see what this does, but it looks like it'll fall apart. Moment- Intelligence. That's uh, Justin. 21. Um, how semi far away is this area? Uh, not too far. Oh, no, we can't stay here. Oh, it, it's 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 not it's not like I thought you meant from your destination. No, from the place you came. It's a, it's a decent. It's a distance. It's not too. Like far. how far in like minutes? Like twenty thirty. Mm, your friend seems to have an interest in this stuff, doesn't he? What were you saying, Bader? Just talking to whoever is around. Out of 21 on that mm-hmm. roll. You think with enough time and excavation of this thing out of the dirt, you could probably figure out what it was, what it was for, maybe even how to repair it, if you had to supply the time. Hmm. Hmm. Keep a note of this. It was a 21 as well, on a straight intelligence check. It looks like some kind of from just just looking at it right here, what you can see, the basic stuff, you would almost think it looks like some kind of like vehicle, like an armored vehicle. Hmm. 
I will keep a note of this. I don't have the time now. I know where it is. I can always bring you back. Good. Good. <laughs> well, I can't do anything as right now. So I guess I'll keep going. Darius is kind of like sitting down, uh, kind of next to like a, like a little flower patch, just kind of like smiling, but he's just kind of like watching the flowers. If, if there's what's, someone. Uh, what's Yui and Santiago and Kit Kat doing? What's happening? Yui is just waiting. Is the lady. Do you like, like flowers? Hmm? Yeah, but she's like. She's like retreating into herself. You can tell. Just looking at her. She's like. Fading, basically. Not like, not like life-wise, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Adrenaline's wearing off. Yeah. Mm. So I guess I'm still yeah. holding her, because I'm sure she wouldn't probably be able to walk very well. I'm gonna ask her, do you like rats? I, I had a pet one, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> I, the I guess I don't know. I guess he got out of my coat before I jumped in because I probably I probably took him out real quick and then so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring him up but I'm gonna be like here you can hold him. The lady traumatized by water, sort of and the rat traumatized by water, comfort each other in your arms. <laughs> thing that's addicted to water. In my arms. <laughs> 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 Stop traumatizing people uh, with hey, water. Uh, she, she seems quite happy with the drama lich. And the drama lich is a little uncomfortable because she's still soaking wet, but it, you know. We're all, we're all soaking wet. I'm soaking wet. She's soaking wet. Wet gang. Lake. Wet gang. Wet chains. <laughs> wet gang. <laughs> wet chains. <laughs> like I said, Dara's just sitting around like poking like at flowers, like looking at trees, like just kind of genuinely just being like himself. Are you making camp here or are you continuing on? I would like to continue on. Mm -hmm. uh, Dar Darith, was it? Yeah. What is, what's up? Sorry, the uh, tree oh. was just saying things, but... The tree? Okay. Um... <laughs> Oh, so for some reason they're speaking Vietnamese. <laughs> oh no, they're gonna pop out. <laughs> what a! Uh, how much further we got to go? Uh, ten minutes. I apologize. It's so much walking. It was hmm. not my intention today. Make but we'll be able to sit Start, and um... be home soon. Yeah. And he starts walking. I want to, once she's calmed down a bit, once we get where we're going and we're settled it, I want to ask this lady some questions. <laughs> but I'm not going to okay. do it to her now. Uh, a few minutes pass, and Dareth, you get to the place that you recognize very well. Hmm. Uh, what time of day is it? Ooh, it's probably... Can I... <laughs> right, before we, right before we start heading back out, I'm just going to kind of knock on the thing Bader's got his head stuck in. Just be like, we're heading, heading out soon. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> Bader is very preoccupied. He's writing every... He's, he's taking notes. <laughs> uh, Bader, uh, sorry, real quick, Bader, uh, before we get back to you there. Uh, looking at this now, it's in much better condition than you initially thought. As you kind of like gone over it more, and you kind of like gone over it a little bit. If you found a power source for this, if you jury rigged something, it might even still work to a degree. Mm. But it would be more near functional. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I have that. Um. Anyway, back to what we were doing. A few minutes pass. Uh, what did you say, Jared? What were you doing? Um, what time of day was it? It's a little after midday. 
Mm. <sighs> do you want to take? Do you all want to take a rest here, or you know, do you want somewhere to be that's more sheltered? This is we fine, but okay. And he's to go. going to walk over into the ground and kind of scratch at it with his foot, and he's going to firmly plant his staff into the ground. Do I describe it or shall I? Yeah, you describe it. Um, when Derek plants his staff into the ground firmly into the dirt, uh, a couple moments pass where nothing happens, but then you all kind of notice that the bottom of the staff seems to be almost exuding roots through the ground at this incredibly rapid pace. And you all watch as the roots kind of dig their way through the ground, sneaking and coming above ground and going back down below, and slowly coming to the edge of about, what, 30 feet now? Uh, before kind of joining back together and beginning to build up almost as you're watching, uh, magically forming this enormous tree in front of you. Um, as you watch, as all these like roots and these branches begin to form, these leaves begin to bloom in front of your eyes as branches begin to sneak out from the trunk. And over the course of 10 minutes, a big-ass thick tree just magically grows in front of you and sprouts out of the ground from where the staff was. He kind of like walks up to you. Come in. Hey. Okay. Uh, I'll describe this because I actually thought of a description. Oh, wow. Um. So you walk in and it's kind of like there's a little bit of a, way, a ways up. The trunk kind of has like a little bit of its own thing going on the inside, but it's nice and sheltered. Um, and right towards where the top of like the tree is, but not entirely, the branches kind of bend over into like the top of like a platform. Um, and it is the centralized roof of the area. It's kind of like a really big box, a very big circular box. Um, there's not much in here. There's like Only a little, there a there's like a, like a pile of hay. And then, like, a horde of, like, junk in, like, one corner. There's a couple bags worth of stuff in here. And Dareth just goes and, like, sits down. Well, I know it's not a lot, but... You, uh, regularly grow little little sheds, or...? The tree... The, the staff does it. Mm. This all mm. came from your staff. Mm-hmm. Mm. Interesting. Mm. Oh, you can come out now. Uh, they do, and they kind of immediately like fly over, and all of you watch as this little tiny dragon uh, gathers together and it scoops up with its wings. It's like a little tiny horde on the ground, which has like two gold pieces and like some like rat bones. <gasps> And like just like random bits of like fluff and like uh, forestry that it's like piled up and like kind of wraps Some itself food. over. Yeah, it, it's got like pieces of like two week old cookie just in there as it's like in its like little pile and it wraps up and it lays out its pile, and looks up all over you, like hisses as if it's telling you to stay away from its shit. So cute. Don't, <laughs> don't bother her horde. Oh, well, I know. <laughs> Um, Miss Yui, if I could speak to you for a moment, mm -hmm. something's bothering me, and I feel it's it's coming from you. Yes, you're bothering. Like, you're not allowed in here. You have to leave. You have to. You have to leave. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a man's only club. <laughs> <laughs> Bros only. No girls rude, allowed. Something you have bothers me. I'm gonna take a seat next to Dareth, and that would be? It's difficult to explain, but whatever you have on you, keep it. But it bothers me. And if you would just show me what it is, that would be helpful. Say is the it, least. Is it that arm thing with the knife? Of course not. And he points to the bag directly with the mind of envy in it. That does. Ooh. I show you, but in exchange, you do not speak of this. I speak of it to anyone. I've been hiding people for a living. 
and your dragon can't have it. She'll try. <laughs> Gonna... Yui unfastens the bag. She pulls out something that's wrapped up in her little arm cloth, but then she moves the cloth away. Uh, that's where it went to... I managed to catch it after we were knocked off. I didn't even realize you I don't like it. nabbed it. Lucky me. He, he's like staring at it intensely. And all, all, all he's like said a couple times is, I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, I need to go to everyone's passive perception. I probably should keep... Is, is everyone's passive perception in the... Uh, plot chat updated? Mine uh, isn't. What is update your passive perception? What it is? Because if you're proficient in perception, it should have gone up. In there. Like it's the same. Mine's still there. Mm -hmm. Mine went up. Let by one. Yeah, so Peter, you're. Okay. Um. Uh, Peter. Uh, Dayrith and Pantiago. Um, you can hear talking from outside the tree. Who's talking? What are they saying? Uh, it's a, it's a little too far away, but it is getting louder. And you recognize a familiar, very uh, aggressive male voice from what you just heard a little bit ago. The the entrance to this thing is it like flush, or is it going to be obvious that there's a giant tree house? No. Um, to describe it a little more, it's kind of like inside the trunk of the tree itself. Mm. I hear any? It's it, it's mm -hmm. it's okay. relatively well hidden. It's it, it moves with me, so nobody will ever find it. Do you want to move closer to the wall to try and listen in, or do you want to stay quiet? Or what are you doing? Yeah, I'm. We yeah, connect and deconnect. Sit here, we're going to lean it against the wall, trying to take a breather. The rest of you doing that as well? When I see Santiago move, I'm going to put the mind of Envy back in the bag and close it up. Okay. Um, you kind of press it against the wall, and the voices are getting louder. And at first, they're pretty inaudible and hard to understand, especially over the sound of the moon from the forest. Um, very quickly, you, you hear uh, the male voice, which sounds to be, I wouldn't say complaining, but basically complaining. He's going like, we've lost one of the Melitastures, we can't find the target, these blasted woods surrounded by foliage and animal yeah. shit, and nothing else. Mm -hmm. The only clue we've had is a group of people that you decided that yeah. it would be okay to just let go on. We have no idea who they were, we don't know where they came from, they had a centaur in their pocket. And you decided it would be fine. And you hear a feminine voice that you haven't heard before. Um, I am the Praetor. You are the Vice Praetor. You are my assistant. You are my subordinate. You are beneath me. I make the rules. I make the decisions. You go along with them. And there's a kind of moment of silence when you hear the male go. Yes, ma'am. I apologize. And you hear the female voice go, In any case, we can send many more Militasters or Gallants or even Valiants if we need to. As it stands, we have something to attend. They're calling back all the Praetors. As much as I despise the Sika Tren, again, I suppose we'll have to. Uh, the parade is happening with the royal family, and we're all having to gather together to join in on the festivities. Our little target will have to be found later. In any case... Now is the time to leave, and you will hear my command, and you will follow it. There isn't a response, but this really lengthy, lengthy moment of silence before they start walking off again. Terrence's got his hand up to his face like this. Fucking course, Katrin's tangled up in all this. I apologize for praying into your business, Miss Yui. It is just... I do not like the way that thing makes me feel. But... 
I can tell it is an object that you need. So. Hmm. Truth be told, while it itself doesn't bother me, it's the means and how why we ended up in, with it in the first place that do. But I won't be saying more than that. You. I don't mind stories. Hmm? The skull is supposed to be. Oh. You check again? It's not. I think the long day of being in here, of being everywhere at once, everything changing is getting to me a little bit. I think I need some time to my thoughts. Well, feel free. I'm planning to stay here anyway for a little while, so. The lady as long as we avoid town in the Praetor, everything should be okay. The lady who, well, from what you've just heard, the Praetor is apparently leaving town. Um, but yeah. Uh, the lady that you helped um, Kit Kat is currently, I imagine you put her down somewhere. Um, she's slow, she's calmed down, she's breathing steadily. Uh, her temporary gills, which you see for a second, are gone. No, they're no longer there. Um, and she looks exhausted. Permanent, Permanent temporary. temporary gills. She looks exhausted and confused, and she keeps glancing at you, Kit Kat. Because, like, because she's so smooth to me, or is it like a oh, I'm glad that you saved me, no matter how traumatized I may be now, kind of a thing. A bit of a mixture of both. She, she, she's, she's thankful. You can tell she's, she's very clearly thankful. She's thanked you many times. But there is also very much like a. I'm surprised it was you that did it. <laughs> Permanent temporary you know? kills. Well. I thought of that anybody either flying her all the way up or going into the lake probably would have been the best idea to hide, you know? Yeah. So. Wonder why. Mm. <laughs> I'll just throw her up <laughs> and then catch her. Drop her in front of the parade and see how they react. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsie. <laughs> Just now? It's fine. Uh, does she look like she'd be up to, like, answering questions or even, like, simple ones? Maybe. Yeah. You, you, you do think so. Santiago, you notice this as well. You think you had questions. But yeah, Aaron, you, you mm -hmm. think that she's... Okay. She, she's you can tell that she's, she's calmed down. Mostly. Darith isn't really You're sure what to sky. be doing. He's just, like, very awkward. He knows that nobody, like, trusts him. <laughs> So he's, he's kind of just sat in the Don't background. Be like, Oopsie. And hey, if they ask us how we got it, we could just say, uh, oh, we found it. We need to think of doing something for food. Mm. Oh, don't worry about that. Mm. Oh, I got it. And he kind of like stands up and he's like, I'll go get something. Give me a minute. You and Darius is going to go out to hunt. No, I can hunt. Okay. So I guess I guess now would be a good time to talk to the lady. I guess I'll ask like, you know, like what's your name or something. And I'm trying to like I'm like kinda keeping my distance a little bit so I'm not like spooking her yeah. and being a few on a fire. Hi, my name is Ren. Is it another W? Ren. Like the bird? Like W R E N Ren. You have gills, by the way. No, I, I don't. I, I don't know. Yes, you do. I, I, don't, I don't anymore. Thank you. You had for, them. Thank you for saving me. You're welcome. Who, who are you? You like flying? <laughs> no, I have a fear of heights. Oh, good thing I didn't... <laughs> Good thing I didn't Red? hover. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bars. Thank you. I also have a fear of drowning. Now. Now I do. You're but welcome. I didn't, so thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone who would lie to a prayer is 
Thank you. Uh, Dareth hasn't left this. quite yet, and he's like, you're welcome. You're welcome. I... Hey, I'm always here fucking over the government, but I would like to know what it's all about. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I've never done it before, but a few days ago, a few weeks, I, I started showing signs of magic and other mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it terrified me because you know what everyone says, that, you know, if you use it too much, then things will happen. But at the same time, it was exciting and I was doing things. And, and then this happened, and she's like, kind of like gestures to her arm. And some people in the village told told the whole government. And and Miss Elise came. You got any place else you can go? Anyone you know out of town? Um, to be off the grid? Um, I, I have family. Um, I have family in one of the other tracking conglomerates. I, I could go there. They they wouldn't betray me. It, not over something like this. I, I I know I know some I know some ships. I could board. Thank you. They the, the Praetor hasn't told everyone. I, I can't go back to Bark Skin, but I, I know somewhere I could go. Okay. We could escort you where we need to go to get on the ship. We ain't staying around here too long, hopefully. I I'm afraid. Yours that Yours is gone hunting, to... by the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm afraid that if you do, then I could hurt you on accident. I'm not worried uh, about that. Uh, I mean, considering what Kitka over here put you through and you didn't leave a scratch on him. She I didn't die, though. It's, it's, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's always fine as long as nobody dies, right? I'm... Yes. Yeah. Well, All right. That's one way of looking place, at it, I suppose. The place I was planning to go to was the capital. From there, I I know some people I could get out pretty easily, but I might be headed over there soon. Are you going for the festival? We were recommended we should check it out at least once. We should. I've been there before. It's it's beautiful. I don't it's think real we would enjoy it this year, though. Big place, big crowd. You keep yourself yeah. covered, you'll blend in. Yeah, that was the idea. Mm. That being said, yeah, all five breakers will be there, so maybe... Well, hopefully I can get there before the royal family comes through. Then, then it'll be fine. You just ain't gotta be seen when they're around. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Trader Elise is known as the kinder one but even then she's the kinder one y yes well kinder than katren or yes yes but still not exactly yes yes do Kitren, i recognize yes is like um you you name. heard the name before you didn't know that it was attached to a praetor yeah i don't are you here no you're not but but i'll say that you, you yeah, you didn't hear her say that, but you have heard before. Do you, do you not know all the Praetors? We're not from around here. This, uh, Praetor Katrin, you happen to know anything about? Maybe describe her, I've heard the name before. Um, she, she's, she's one of the most mysterious of all of the Praetors, and that's saying something. She disappears for years at a time, only coming out for formal events where she's required to by the world government. No one knows where she goes or who she talks to or what she deals with, but apparently she's some kind of snake lady or something. Snake lady? She would be wrapped up in this. Um... If you really don't know who the Praetors are, then you must really not be from around here. No. So there's the Grand Sorceress, Elise, who I suppose you've met now. There's the Snake, Tren, the Halo Giant, Niasius, the Metal Ancient, Acadius, and the Raconteur of Fates, who just calls himself Seer. We've... we've encountered Iasius before, quite the, um... character. Yeah, they're... I think we know one of them. Yes. 
Well, I imagine you felt their power yourself. Mm. Uh, every every crater is comparable to one another. Look, you, you helped me immensely. Otherwise, I'd be in the hands of one of them. And I don't know, before now, I've, I've always felt safe when thinking about the whole government. They, they've, they're not perfect, no, but they've kept us all safe from... Well, I, I thought from people, like, and she kind of gestures towards you, Kit Kat, but she does it, like, half-heartedly and kind of, like, she does it, like, kind of ashamedly. She's like, well... That's why we're down here. One. It's different, I suppose. I was born like this. That's not what anyone... That's not what the the, the government says, that if you are not of stable mind and serenity and of serious ability, then the magic, even the smallest kind, can corrupt you. I was born out of an egg. I don't know what to say about that. (laughs) (laughs) I have always looked like this. Magic users don't turn into those. I'm sorry. (laughs) What? I I don't know who to believe anymore. Yes, this is normal. Usually, they're they're born like that. that, But but I I I practiced magic. I had some, and now she gestures that are like wrapped up on this has happened. So what you're saying, I I want to believe you because you're the people that saved me. It's happened to me. The the tiefling, they just, they look like that. That's just, that's what they look like their whole life. Listen, we're from very, very far away. It wouldn't surprise me to know that magical things work a little bit differently where we're from and here. So, but. I don't know if we can add any meaningful advice on what to do other than to get around people you trust and learn how to control it. I I need to leave by the end of this week. The the festival is starting at the beginning of next, and that'll be the best time to blend in with the crowd. Yeah. Uh, you, You saved me, and if you really are far away from here, then... Anything that I know, I'd be happy to tell you. I don't have anything to give besides what I know. You ain't gotta give us nothing, but the information is very much appreciated. Mm -hmm. I I was studying to become a cleric myself of the world government. Then this happened. Not a magical cleric, just one that would spread the word and help people. I suppose that's there a lost to me now. God that they worship or follow? The royal family, it is said to be descended from gods. It was at this point... It was at this point that the party had sat down for camp. They had so many questions, so many unanswered questions, and very little answers to go on. Uh, Ren had helped send them all out a little bit with telling them about the Praetors, everyone being Katrin, the Praetor who's a snake, the Raconteur who calls himself Sears, the Grand Sorceress Elise, um, the Metal Ancient, which is Arcadius, and they had just learned about every Praetor that was kind of in the book for them. And they also learned that the capital, called Seaflight, is having a festival soon for the royal family who are portrayed as gods, as at least lineaged from gods of some kind. And that the whole festival is to kind of show off the royal family to what would be considered the common folk in this world. And they had learned that their problems on the middle plate had not only extended to the lower plate, but may also pose a problem down here to them as well, along with the Revenant also on the hunt. And it comes to this point that everybody decides to settle down and go for camp. They have no idea what's happened to Lucas. They have no idea what he's up to or how long it's going to take him. And all they know is that they're trying to help Ren get to a place called Seaflight, which is the capital of this triconglomerate of islands that they found themselves in. 